on, sorry, I haven't put on the, um, I haven't put on the art light yet. One moment, please. <laughs> I've just popped it to the technical difficulty screen for a second so you don't get like a big blast of light in your face, which might be uh, potentially distressing or harmful to some viewers. So uh, let's try that again. Now you can actually see the artworks that we're working on. Uh, so there's a couple layers to this today. Um, and that's because I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. I have the, the choice paralysis is too real. Um, so I've got this, this sketch that I did uh, at lunchtime earlier today. Oh, Biddle Boy, the, the, fun, the fun with perspectives. The fun with perspective is in this because we've got, we've got layers of um, shelves of book stacks and, and things happening here. Which hopefully, hopefully will will all make sense once we've started like adding books to the shelves, painting things in, adding like shading and stuff. Um, but we've got some some layers of you know sort of one of these very cavernous, densely packed uh, secondhand bookshops is the idea behind this piece. Um, and then we've got a couple little guys back here. Just one of them is a. Uh, is standing here just having a little peruse through a book and the other one is just sort of chilling on on a on a little standing stool because you know shopping for secondhand books is tiring <laughs> and i think I, I think i might draw a little stack of books next to him there that are the ones that they're going to be uh, they're going to be taking home with them i don't know how they're going to fit it into this guy's rucksack but uh, i don't know maybe maybe it's got a larger capacity than it looks like it does <laughs> i really hope he's got a strong back and shoulders Oh, beans. Anyways, uh, so that is, that is what I sketched today. But I also had this piece, which I sketched a little while ago and just haven't painted it, which is, is just a couple, some couple little guys having a nice little dancey dance, um, on the beach and sort of behind them is like the forest and stuff. And they've got a little, little fire going and these little lanterns. And my thinky thoughts with the lanterns was that my beautiful moderator slash spouse bought me these amazing, super vibrant neon colored acrylic inks. Um, at Christmas time and they are so fun and they're so cool. And I thought that they would look that painting these like paper lanterns and those like really bright, col vibrant colors, um, and having that sort of reflecting would, would just look really, really cool. So hopefully it does, <laughs> but I thought I might start in on getting sort of like the, some of the background, uh, gubbins done for that as well, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just I'm just running on vibes and goofing around. But the other thing is I have to I have to draw in all of the books on this bookshelf and there's so many of them. There's so many. It's gonna be so many books. Uh I've done it again. it's not the first time I've drawn a sequence of bookshelves. Uh as you may recall, I did do a piece um with Terry the Forge Mage a little while ago. And I guess I decided, what if I take this concept and just, again, and just turn it up to 11? Um, because, I don't know, I like suffering and crying and feeling sad, but also I just think it would be really cute and fun, and I like working on things that just have a ridiculous amount of detail like that. I think it'll be, I think it'll be a nice thing to do. I hope it'll be a nice thing to do, and if it's not a nice thing to do, I can abandon it and do something else. <laughs> That's okay, right? That's allowed? Anyways, um, sorry, I was just finding, I was just finding the, the last piece of bookshelfy type artwork that, that I did, uh, on stream. It was this, and oh my god, just doing that many books took so long, and this piece is so many more books than that. Why? Why have I decided to do this? This is silly, this is stupid, I should not be, no, why am I doing, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. Um, it's fine. <laughs> What I'm going to do is go grab my chapstick because I'm just noticing now that I'm like speaking that, oh my God, for some reason my lips are like super dry right now. One moment, please. One moment. Much better, and it's vanilla flavored. Love that for me. Anyways, uh, so this was the this was the paint set that I thought I would use for like the backgroundy bits. 
of the little sort of beachscape situation. This is, um, this is a, uh, a little Gansai set of like variations on black, I guess, uh, from a, a little art supply shop called Choosing Keeping in London that I absolutely love. Um, I, do, I don't know the name of the set except that it's, it calls itself Japanesque color. Not Japanese, Japanesque. Um, so it's, it's Japanese-ish, I suppose. Um, but um, a lovely, lovely little set. A very dark, very muted um, colors. I used this quite a bit in... Um, last May when I was doing all that Hollow Knight art. Um, and it was a lot of fun. In conjunction with, with a set of, like, pastel... Oh, silly little guy! Thank you so much for the follow! Welcome on in! Thank you, thank you! How's it going? Lovely to see you. Welcome on in. Um, yeah, anyways. Oh, yes. The Hollow Knight art that I did <coughs> last, like, spring-ish, summer-ish, I guess. Um, there's a couple of limited edition prints in the shop if you wanted one. There's not very many. But you can if you want. No brush, obviously. I'm just happy you're here. But also. <laughs> no, why is chatbot not? Oh, shoot. I haven't enabled chatbot. <laughs> Hold up. Ignore I said that. Let me try again. <laughs> oh, silly little guy. Thank you very much for the hydrate. I shall take a sip of my coffee. It is decaf. So it is a fully hydrating beverage. It just is it's coffee. Mmm. And it is delicious too. Oh, it's stone cold. <laughs> but it is nice. Anywho, how was everybody's weekend? What'd you get up to? I'm trying to remember what I did, and the answer I think is not very much. Um, I started a couple little portraits of little guys. I've been toying with the idea for a while of adding a new tier to my Patreon that is the the little guys tier. And that's, it's literally, you just get an original A7 painting that is a little painting of a little guy. Um, and I don't, I wouldn't expect anyone to use it for more than one month because it's an original artwork, so it's not going to be, like, super inexpensive. Um, but if you wanted an inexpensive original artwork, it's probably a good way to do it. Anyways, I haven't put that in, into practice yet, though, because I want to paint some, like, example slash representative sort of little guys so people have an idea of what they'd be giving me money for. Um, and I just keep waffling about what's the best, what are the best little guys to paint for that, because, you know, it's, it's not just painting, it's marketing, which I am notoriously bad at. I don't know. I just, sometimes I feel like I just have a quality that people just don't like, I, and is there something about the way that I, that I present myself that's very Marmite? I don't know. Maybe it's the tism. Anyways, um, hello, San. Welcome on in. How's it going? Lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, I was just setting up, setting up in my pants. Though that being said, if I'm going to be painting this, I should probably masking fluid first. Anyways, how are you doing? How are you going? It's lovely to see you. How was your weekend? I'm trying to remember what I did this weekend. And the answer is not a ton. I worked on a couple of paintings. I did, I was doing some work that involved needing to set up um, a new Google account, like a second Google account, because I've, I've had a Gmail address since I was like at university. Um, but uh, I needed to set up a, a second, a second Google account email address and, and other bits um, because of something that I was doing. And because it's a second account, because it's my second account, so I guess Google, like, figured out that I already had an account, and in less than a day, I got a notification saying that my account was disabled, um, that my account was disabled for, um, creating multiple Google accounts for abuse, and that I could appeal this decision, <laughs> So I've submitted an appeal, um, just to say, I have no intention of using this account for abuse purposes. I created a second email address for business inquiries. Um, but it takes up to two days, apparently, to, to receive a response, or sometimes more, 
So I don't know whether or not I'm going to be able to recover that second account. But since they've done it the first time, if I don't hear back from them, I do not feel comfortable or safe trying to create another second Google account um, for fear that they'll be like, oh, you're trying to circumvent the rules again, are you? We're going to disable your, like, original account that you've had since 2004. F you. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to take that risk. Um, and I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty low stakes reason that I had, but basically I, I needed, I needed an email for, I wanted to create like an, an email for business inquiries. And I also wanted to, um, I, I created a second YouTube channel basically to house things that, that I, I don't necessarily need to upload on my standard YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, by the way. Um, in case you're curious, here's the one you can subscribe to. The other one currently doesn't exist. Uh, but I'll let you know when, if it does, if it ever does again. So, so that's fun. So that's what I've been up to. And to be honest, despite the fact that it's really not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, like I don't really need this second account. I can find a way around doing the thing that I wanted to do without having a second YouTube account, et cetera, et cetera. With that being said... Um, I, uh, it made me feel really sad. Like, I felt like, even though I knew that, like, you are allowed to have multiple Google accounts, you know, for, like, personal and business or different reasons, and lots of people have, like, a YouTube account and then a second YouTube account, you know, like, lots of channels do this. They'll have one that's, like, their main uploads and the other one is where they put their short videos or where they put their stream VODs or whatever. That's not unusual. Or just where they do different things that don't fit with the remit of their, their main channel. Um, so I don't know why mine got flagged as you're breaking the rules when that's not a breakable rule. So hopefully, fingies crossed that they come back and say it's okay. Um, but does anybody else get this when you get, like, when you get something like that, like, someone is accusing you of misbehaving, and you get this, like, immense just feeling of, like, sadness and guilt and bad in, like, in your heart, even though you know you haven't done anything wrong? Like, I, I, I know I'm following the rules here, like, this is allowed, but, but it's, it, it feels like I've done something bad because, <laughs> because it feels like I'm getting in trouble, I don't like it, ah! Uh, I think possibly that's just um, also the fact that I have a very well-established sense of injustice. So if something feels like an injustice, I'm like, Ugh! anyways, um, so that, so that's what I was dealing with over the weekend, which I think kind of demotivated me a little bit, but pretty much over it. Moving on. Um, I'm happy to, to, to be painting some stuff. Uh, Sen says, slowly beating the cold and the exhaustion that came with it. I'm so glad to hear that you're on the mend. I hope you feel entirely better very soon. Painting a mock-up for the cosplay I'm working on. Let's see how much I have to alter. Hell yeah! I hope it all goes very, very well indeed. Love that for you. Um, Sen says, I have two Google accounts and never had to go through that. That's because it's a totally normal thing to have. Super normal. Um, but yeah, as I say, I'm now genuinely paranoid about trying, like, again if they don't restore this account. Because I don't want them to disable my actual main account that has, you know that's tied to things like my bank account. Because it would be kind of bad if somehow I ended up getting locked out of, like, my banking because of it, you know? Just a little bit. Um, it is ridiculous how easily these things can sort of fall down and fall through because literally, like, whatever bots they run decided that they detected, you know, some kind of suspicious activity on your account and it's like, ha ha. And yet, you know, like lots of people are actually doing suspicious activity and never, <laughs> never get, never get taken down for it. It's clearly the system is broken. Anyways, um, let's mask off some of these bits in the foreground here that I don't necessarily want to be painted over with very dark shadowy hues just yet at least so I'm just gonna fill this right in there's this little log over here that maybe they are gonna 
they'll want to sit down on once they're finished having their little dance. They're dancing, by the way, because they're so cute. It's cute. Um, and obviously the little, the little row of paper lanterns there are going to want to be very brightly painted later, so... Sorry if I'm kind of multitasking here today. I just figured I may as well try and get a lot of stuff done. I actually hadn't initially planned on drawing a secondhand bookshop, but then um, the the thing that, that I was going to draw, I didn't like the way that it was turning out. Sometimes it's just like that. Sometimes you draw something and you're like, mm, I could continue belaboring this for the next like nine hours, but I also kind of just maybe don't want to. So I decided I just maybe didn't want to with that. And instead, um, elected to, uh, sketch something else. I was going to do, I was going to do some seagulls and I couldn't get them looking. I couldn't quite get the, the, you know, sometimes when, when you have like a distinctive art style and you've, ne there's something that you've never drawn in that art style and you're trying to figure out not how to draw a seagull, not, not how do you draw a seagull, but how do I draw a seagull is a very specific and distinctive question. So I had to ask myself, not, not how do you draw a seagull, but how do I draw a seagull? And the answer is, I don't know yet. So <laughs> I'm going to come back to that another time. Anyways, I want to, I basically, I want to, I want to just draw a bunch of seagulls because they're cool. Um, <laughs> afternoon, afternoon, says Dan. Afternoon to you too. How's it going? Lovely to see. Uh, how's life amid the profs and dons? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I mean, technically that's true, but also I'm in my house in my pajim jams. <laughs> so I truly wouldn't know. Um, but yeah, not too shabby, not too shabby. I've got a nice cup of decaf and I've got a nice cup of tea and, um, just masking off some of the more obviously foregroundy bits of this little painting. And whilst that masking fluid dries, I will get on with doing some sketches on the other piece that I have prepared for today, because I am, oh, beans, I am so prepared. The preparedness over here is just overwhelming. Such preparedness. Anyways, um, how are you doing? It's lovely to see you. Welcome on in. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you had a good weekend. I had a bit of a weird weekend, but, uh, well, we've discussed that, so we can move on. This is a safe stream of a coziness today, and I'm channeling the most coziest of vibes, at least I hope we are. That's my favorite flavor of vibe. Cozy. What does cozy taste like, I wonder? I guess it depends on what you consider a comfort food. That would be what cozy tastes like. To me, I would say cozy tastes like, like a very milky hot chocolate, perhaps, but very milky, um, or maybe, maybe Hungarian honey cookies for me, that, that's a cozy flavor, but I think even more so the hot chocolate. Uh, I think mine is black currant, says Dan. Ooh, that is cozy. That's a very cozy taste. Yes, I completely agree. Actually, interestingly, that reminds me. I was looking for, I was, I've been really craving like black currant cordial. I have not had it probably in a couple of years now. Um, I'm not, I'm really, I can't do any of the like, I've talked about this on stream before. I can't do any of the like artificial sweetener tastes, um, I find as soon as you put like sucralose or ace K or anything like that into a drink, it just, it overrides the actual flavor of it. It's too sweet and I'm not a fan. Um, but, uh, I was hoping I might be able to find a black currant cordial at my local supermarket, um, this weekend because I've really been craving black currant cordial and I looked and I looked and I looked all of the black currant ones, and they had a couple, like, I know, I know I can't, like, Ribena all has the, like, the sweeteners and stuff in it, but I was hoping there might be, like, a black currant cordial from one of, like, the posh cordial brands. There was blueberry and black currant, but that's not really the same as just, like, black currant squash, right? So I ended up leaving with nothing and feeling very sad about it. Um, 
there is a there is a shop that I buy rhubarb cordial from uh, semi regularly, and when I say semi regularly, I think probably like twice a year because you know I, I don't drink cordially beverages that often anymore. Um, I never have really, but um, yeah, I was kind of was kind of hoping that they might have it. They do actually sell a black currant cordial, but it's out of stock. Why? <laughs> So I am uh, I am on the hunt for just black currant cordial that doesn't have any that doesn't have any sweeteners in it and it is a struggle. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Anyways. Um I need to add oh god. Why have I done this to myself? I need to add I need to put books on these bookshelves now. Oh, uh, it's going to look so jank. It's gonna look so jank for so long. I'm so stressed. Um, I'm not really stressed at all. It's fine. <laughs> but, um, also the lines right now are really scruffy and sketchy. And, um, honestly, some of these shelves are very much, like, not aligned and on the piss and kind of irregular. And, but I feel like also this is... This is a secondhand bookshop, and I feel like it's probably been open for a really, really long time, and these shelves have been here for a really, really long time, and if they are just, you know, kind of screwy, I feel like that kind of tracks. I feel like that works here. That seems okay to me, just because of the, the nature of the kind of space that we're dealing with here. I feel like it makes sense that uh that there would be a certain degree of imperfection to to some of these shelves like some of these shelves may well predate like the 20th century you know so if they look a little bit funky and a little bit wiggity wonky, it's probably just because they're old and they've been repaired many, many times and they've gathered so much dust and they've had so many books on them and they've sort of, the maybe some of the wood has warped and buckled in places and they've had parts replaced and they're just, uh, they've just got some character, that's all. They've just got, they've just got character. I'm just giving some of the shelves a little a little bit of thickness here, but um just thinking. I'm just thinking. Um so there's kind of there's a set of shelves here that kind of form an archway um that's being held up by like a bookshelf here and then a bookshelf you can't see over here. Um the shelves can't be any jankier than the one in your BRB screen. What? What? You mean this? You mean this perfectly level shelf? I don't know what you're talking about. Also, enjoy these few seconds of the BRB song that has been precipitated by our good friend Dan. Thank you, Dan. Anyways, back to art camera. Say goodbye to the BRB song. It'll be back later because we will do a BRB um, uh, partway through stream as we usually do. Uh, I feel like this line is not quite as it should be. I feel like it should should be just a little bit more this way, so I'm going to... Should I be just, like, free eyeballing perspective-y stuff? Probably not, but... Eh. As long as it looks... Honestly, this isn't being evaluated by an art instructor. As long as it looks fairly... Um... Correct to mine eyes, I feel like we're probably okay. I precipitated nothing since Dan. Okay, fine, fine. Fine, I take, I take it back. Okay, okay, alright, alrighty. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, okay. Um. Stream. St stream. Am I streaming? I am streaming, right? Cause I just went to my Twitch stream page and it says my it says I'm offline. Oh no. Oh no. I didn't end stream. There I am. That's so bizarre. I had to refresh the page. It was for some reason under the impression that I was offline. Um, I had a bit of a scare there. I thought that I thought that the stream had like died on me. 
but we're okay. We're okay. It's all good. Oh my god. That was, that was, honestly, that was cruel. <laughs> that was very cruel of Twitch to not update to reflect the fact that we are, in fact, streaming. <laughs> Why? Um, anyways. <laughs> I've just done, I've just done a, a little Google image search for a secondhand bookstore just to, just to remember what it looks like when there's a bunch of books on shelves. Um, <laughs> and, uh... I, I would love, I would love to just, like, it's not, it's not a job that I could do, but I, um, I absolutely would, like, the, a dream job would be just, like, working in a secondhand bookstore, but to be honest, it probably isn't a dream job. It's probably, it, like, every job has its stresses, um, and its frustrates, and I worked in a library for a really long time, so, like, you know, it's, it's in the same ballpark. Um, but yeah, anyways, but they're, they're places I like to visit, certainly. And I mean, you know, this is in the same, in the same vein, there are a lot of places that I visit and I'm like, oh, I'd love to live here. And then when I really think about it, when I really give it like genuine sort of meditation, I'm like, no, I don't. I would not want to live here. There are so many things that would be different if I lived here versus just visiting. Um, and it's the same as would I want to work in a bookstore? No, probably not. I'm not really, I'm not really a good, like, commerce marketing type work person. Um, I did work in, in a retail situation very briefly many, many years ago, and I just bristled at the having to ask people for their email addresses because sometimes, you know, you can read a person and tell when they just, they don't want to sign up for the newsletter. They just want to get this one pair of socks and go home. Like sometimes you can just tell and you know, you're just going to annoy them by asking like, do you want to give us your email address? So if you just skip that bit, they'll be less annoyed by you. But you know, head office doesn't see it like that. They just see you as, you know, like, oh, you need to push the email address thing. And you're like, <sighs> trust the people who work for you a little bit more. Anyways, hello, Samantha. How's it going? Welcome on in. Sorry for the rant there. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. <sighs> but I think that that's, that's in large part. I mean, this is, this is a, this is a, a tangent, but, um, those sorts of things. When head office says that you have to do it this way, when you know that, like, from hands-on experience of having done the thing, that actually doing it that way is better than doing it this way. But trying to explain to them that, like, actually it's it's more useful to, to do it this way than to do it that way. They're like, no, we've done whatever and you have to do it this way now. And you know it's going to be worse. You know it's going to make things un more unpleasant for, like, the people that that are your, your customers. But hey, head office says we have to do this, so I guess that's what we're going to do. And I was never good with that kind of because I said so type, like pronouncements from up on high when I, when I worked for a big, like, corporation like that, I just ooh, bristle. I bristle because, you know, my question is always, but why? It, this is worse. Why are you asking me to do something that's worse? And then I'll want to not do it. And then eventually I'll start not doing it and then I'll get fired. Um, <laughs> yay. Anyways, um, I'm going to sip my tea. I'm going to sip my tea, which is uh, green tea with lime and mint. Mm. No, it isn't. I tell a lie. This is a green tea with spearmint and jasmine. I made a different tea. It's so good. So good. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Dan says, I think Sammy got fired for not asking for email addresses. Just a hunch. Honestly, to, to tell you the truth, I don't know why I got fired. I think I possibly got fired for phoning in sick once. Um, and I won't say what my symptom was, but I will say that my symptom was because it's, it was not pleasant, but I will say that my symptom was, um, cold related and such that you would not, uh, in, involved something happening to a person that you would not want to be doing in a customer facing role. Um, <laughs> and I told this to my manager and I called as early as I could knowing that someone would be there. And, um, the next time I went to work, they were like, okay, so today's your last day. Um, you've accrued some holiday, so that'll be in your final pay packet. And I'm like, what the, what, I'm sorry, what? 
So I think it was because I phoned in sick one time and it was, and, and they were just like, oh, well that you'd rather not convey a virus to our customers. Go skip, do leave, please. <laughs> it's for the best. Cause obviously that job was terrible. Um, and I wasn't really wanting to stay in that job for a long time anyways, because as I say, it was terrible, but, uh, still one likes to leave on one's own terms. You know what I mean? Anyways. Um, but that was also over 10 years ago. Cause I am old now. <laughs> um, <coughs> but, um, Oh, how do you draw books? It's 45 minutes into stream and I haven't drawn a single book. Is this because I've been putting it off? Um, it might be. Was this in Manchester or pre-England? It was Manchester. It was Manchester. Good guess, good guess, Dan. Um, it was Manchester. Um, and as I say, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge surprise and it wasn't a huge letdown, but it was just, you know, it was what it was and it wasn't a good job. So it worked out for the best, but, uh, the, I think the absolute, the absolute worst was that my coworkers were planning to meet up and go out for drinks that night. And so I met up and went out for drinks with them, but it felt really weird because they were all like, woo, let's party. And I'm like, I just got fired from my job. Yay. <laughs> but, um, also the, uh, the manager in that job was, oof. Um, had some surprisingly homophobic opinions for a lesbian. Um, and that wasn't really a comfortable work environment to be in. So I wasn't super sad to leave. I'm still friends with one of the people I worked with then. She's really cool. So there's one upside to the whole experience is that I have one friend I made from that job and she's a really cool person. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, she has unsurprisingly, moved on to better things about a month after I did. <laughs> Makes sense for Wank goes up here, says Dan. No, I will say, I will say. Uh, so for those who don't know, I am an immigrant. I come from Canada. I live in the UK. I'd been given a tip from a friend of mine who is a producer he was like, if you're moving to the UK, you should move to Manchester. That's where all like the, the good media jobs are. So I moved to Manchester because supposedly that's where all the good media jobs were. Um, unfortunately, what he didn't mention <laughs> was that Manchester also at the time, anyways, I don't know what it's like now, but at the time had an incredibly, had one of the highest unemployment rates in the country, meaning that any job that I was going for in my, you know, sort of preferred fields of work was also probably being applied for, for by like a hundred other people. <laughs> also looking to do similar stuff, um, who were also from this country and therefore had a bit of an advantage <laughs> over me. <laughs> ah! Um, and so, yeah, I, I ended up getting a job in a shop cause, uh, cause it was something, it was something to pay the bills. <laughs> um, <coughs> and it was not pleasant. Um, but I did enjoy, you know what I, I will say about that job in the shop is that I did get a tidy little discount on the things that they sold. And I very quickly found out that, um, the, I'm five feet tall and the size that I am at the time, um, was such that I could get away with wearing like the largest size from the children's section, which means I could get some very cool, like, sweatshirts and stuff. I, I had this, I had this jumper for years that was like really cool. It was like super dark blue with big yellow stars all over it from the kids section. <laughs> and I loved it. Um, and it cost me like, I don't know, under 10 pounds probably because of the discounts and stuff that you get when you work there. Um, it was, uh, Dan says, go on, I'll ask. Want to name and shame the shop? I mean, I mean, there's no sense not naming and shaming at this point because they don't have, they don't have physical shop fronts in this country anymore. It's the gap. And you can see, and you can see the through line from the, like the butterfly effect of firing me from their company to 
being insolvent enough that they had to close all of their physical locations. Clearly, there's some sort of causation happening here, right? If they'd kept me on, surely I would have advanced into, you know, sort of very useful, like, marketing positions um, more more seniorly and been able to direct them in, in, in a greater understanding of, no, 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 your American-style customer service just doesn't work in this country. People don't like it. Anyways. <laughs> That's my theory, anyway. Because <laughs> it was a very American-style um, shop. In many ways, in terms of the way that they ran it, it was very much just sort of like, I don't know, it just felt very American. And I feel like British people don't like that. <laughs> like the, the American style of customer service where somebody comes up to you within like two seconds of entering a shop. They're like, hiya, you guy, can you need help with anything? And it's just like, just, just leave me alone. I just want to look at jeans. If I want, if I want, if I, if I want to ask any questions, I will ask you. Leave me alone. Anyways, um, I, I feel like that. I feel like that's just, you know, yeah, just, just, anyways. Um, Samantha says, a lesson to be learned. Never fire Sammy if you want to succeed. I mean, I think we can probably just, like, we can leave off, like, the, the second fragment of that sentence and just say, lesson to be learned. Never fire Sammy. Just don't fire me. I'm a good person, and I'm a very loyal and dutiful worker if you don't just fucking fuck me over. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Samantha says, if this is true, there are a number of businesses I think you should get hired and subsequently fired from. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's <laughs> there. There are a few I feel like I would love to put out of business, but uh, <clears throat> anyways, but I don't want to have to work for them in the first place. That's the problem. <laughs> anyway, so that's my very old story <laughs> of the time. I worked for and then didn't work for kind of a crappy place to work. Is it a thrilling story? No, <laughs> not by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a story. All right. Um, do I want to do I want to do books sort of from the from the back end forwards? Maybe. I don't know. Is this I've got a couple of I've got a couple of wonky little lines that I just didn't bother erasing under here. Um... So there's some, there's some whackness happening in these shelves at the back here, but I feel like I can kind of work through it. Um, at least I hope I can. I had set one of the bookshelves to be just at the, like, it turns out at the exact same level as the waistband of this, this fellow's jacket, which, uh, which was just causing a really annoying tangent. I was like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't have it be doing that. That's just deeply unpleasant. But again, if these shelves are a little bit wonky, that's fine. That's fine. We're not too concerned with that anyways. Because as I say, this is an antiquarian books bookstore and things might be a little bit funky in places and that's okay. Um, so I'm just going to start. These books at the back are nice and easy because, well, I say they're nice and easy. They're incredibly tiny. <laughs> this is going to be really stressful to actually paint in when we get to it. But, um... But in the meantime, um, we can start adding in some little, little book shapes here and there. Uh, on these here shelves, and I think that um, will help to make the space start to feel a little bit more complete. There we go. Just some stacks on their sides because why not funsies? Um, I do love an old school bookstore, like just with, with rafts and rafts of very old books with the, the narrow corridors and, and all that fun stuff. I find it incredibly, oh, just so joyous to, uh, to, to, to navigate my way through. It's such a nice, it's such a nice space. It's such a nice kind of space to be in. 
Um, I think I'll, I'll finish off like this section and then we'll go back to doing a bit of painting and we'll kind of back and forth it so that I don't drive myself completely, uh, completely bonkers doing, doing the V's in the first instance. This is a slightly shorter, stumpier tome, just like me. Do these books have any rhyme or reason of the order that they're in? They're probably vaguely arranged by topic. Maybe I might, I might pop in like a little sign up here somewhere that says, you know, like, oh, these books are about such and such. Um, I think he's, he's reading a book about bird watching in the local area, uh, arranged by ISBN. Oh, little boy. I don't want to have to be the bookshop worker who does that. Ah. <laughs> I mean, I used to, I used to be, I used to be a master of the Dewey Decimal System, at least. Um, if you give me a Dewey Decimal number, I can probably still tell you at least what the vague category of it is. Um, though it has been over 10 years, so I'm probably, I'm probably misremembering a bit. What if head office said you had to? Oh gosh, head office of a place like this is, is probably one like 75 year old man who smells like old books and has been wearing the same cardigan since the 1960s. 69 says Sledge! Oh, babe, nice! Uh, I believe it would be 069, because it always starts with a three-digit number, and oh god, the, the, the first, like, 0 to 100 is really, like, kind of a miscellany, if I'm being honest. Um, so I honestly am not sure I can tell you what what 069 would be off the top of my head it's it's gonna be some kind of miscellaneous situation anyways um <laughs> but uh because there there's there's a lot that 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 goes on in the i think there's like computer stuff is in sort of like the zeros and um, like computer science, but I think computer science is more like zero, zero, zero to zero, zero, like to, to like 10 ish. And then it goes into other stuff. Um, anyways, Hey sunshine, you probably weren't expecting quite a <laughs> as comprehensive, a discussion of the Dewey decimal system when you suggested the number 69, did you? I'm so sorry. Anyways, Hey turnip, welcome on in. We're talking about the Dewey decimal system because I used to work at a library and I wanted to see if I could guess, um, the vague category of a thing by Dewey decimal number. And the answer is anything that starts with a zero is really difficult. Um, because it is kind of miscellaneous topic. <laughs> But also nice. Um, head office is the guy who runs the Swindon branch. Oh no, says Dan. Oh no, not Swindon. Not Swindon. Oh, I have nightmares about Swindon. Um, not, 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 no offense to anyone who's from Swindon or lives in Swindon, but the number of times that I've had like some kind of bad thing happen relating to travel through Swindon is about 50% of the times that I've traveled through Swindon, <laughs> which is a pretty significant amount. Anyways, um, uh, Turnip says, I googled it out of curiosity. 069 is, ah, so yeah, like museum stuff. Gotcha. Um, within the generalities. Yeah. Anything from zero to like 099 is like sort of generalities is the term. For some reason, my brain wants to say miscellany, but it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's not dissimilar. Museum science. Um, I always used to be in the 900s for my degree, aka <coughs> the basement, says, uh, says Moriax. Also, hi, welcome in. How's it going? Lovely to see you, my friend. Hello, hello. Uh, hope you're having a lovely Monday. Um, do they involve going around the roundabout, says Dan? Oh, God, thankfully no roundabout on the train. <laughs> Uh, Sledge says, nope, signal is shite as I'm in the, the center of a major urban con conurbation, so obvs there's no three signal. Oh yeah, we've had, we're having real trouble getting mobile signal in the center of the city right now. It is deeply annoying. <laughs> but I guess the, 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 uh, the other side of it is that the, uh, so many buildings are owned by the university that you can just walk past, like, one out of every two buildings in, in the city center where we live, and you'll just your phone will just jump onto the university Wi-Fi, which is rather nice. Um, 
but, uh, but yeah, anyways, um, 900s, 900s is like, is like history, I'm thinking. I'm thinking a lot of like history type topics. Um, and oh, oh, like geography and travel stuff is also in the 900s, isn't it? Yes. Yes. I remember all of the beautiful, all of the, oh, thumbing through all of the travel guides in like the, the 900 and somethings, um, like the 900 teens, I think. Um, 914 is Europe. I remember that distinctively. Anyways, I think my degree was the 600s. I'm not sure. Back to Google with me. 600s is a lot of, um, 600s, there was definitely some, some sciencey stuff, some practicalities, health things, uh, cooking as well was in the 600s. There's a lot of cool stuff in the 600s in the, in, in the Dewey system. Um, Like, uh, like science and technology type things, I think, like, like I'm specifically remembering like medicine, but also like cooking and, um, car repair manuals, like that kind of like, like, um, that kind of tech type stuff, computer things in, into the 600s, mostly 700s. Oh, 700s, like the arts, right? Cause yeah, like six hundreds is like is is sort of like science and tech, and then seven hundreds is like the arts. Okay, okay. Um, uh, it was mostly seven hundreds this turn up, but I think it crossed into six hundreds randomly. Yeah, I think I think perhaps because there is some stuff to do with like possibly some things that that got classified under the six hundreds that are sort of more like craft type things but involve like working with your hands potentially which is why there would be a crossover it's it's interesting trying to figure out how they came up with all of these classifications like where does this topic live under what subheadings do all of these topics live because sometimes there are ones where it feels like they could probably hang out in sort of more than one um subcategory and then you end up with things that are just like miscellaneous <laughs> <sighs> like, why is museum science in 069? I don't know, but that's nice. Um, I can also, in terms of nice numbers, I can tell you, I think 420 is like, I want to say it's like 400s is like languages and stuff. So that'll be something to do with, with languages, uh, like linguistics or um, like a specific language, but I can't remember which one, if it is. Um. <coughs> Anyways. Where do you find books about the history of coffee? Um, probably... Uh, I want to say probably in the 600s. I cannot off the top of my head say what... It depends on what to what aspect of it. Because if we're looking at, like, agriculture, that's definitely under the 600s. Um, uh, but it might also be under, like... I think it's in like the 640s that is like the food and drink category. And that's where you find a lot of like cooking and that kind of thing. Um, 042, the best number, <laughs> says Samantha. Again, oh, I can't remember a lot of the specific ones in the zero category because it is such a miscellaneous category. And also we didn't circulate a lot of books in a lot of the... Um... Oh, no. Oh no. Okay. Sorry. I've just, I've just looked it up. Um, currently anything between 40 and 50. So like 40 to 49 are unassigned category numbers. So the answer is 42 is about nothing. Interesting. Interesting unassigned which so, does that feel appropriate I, that's somehow that feels appropriate to me i don't know anyways i don't know if whence i speak but that's that's kind of fun 
there's, there's just there's just a book that's kind of just like wadged in there because I think that's fun. So wait, we can still define what zero four two goes to. I don't know who sets these definitions. There must be some like Dewey Decimal Council of the Universe or something. Um, can I find out who who actually creates these classifications? Who like who does this? Dewey Decimal Classification. Uh huh. Who who runs it? Administration. Uh huh. Melville Dewey. That's that's a person. The. Okay, I don't know because I'm not reading this entire entire Wikipedia article while streaming, but um, it goes to life, the universe, and everything says turn up. Oh my god, that's going to be so many books. Hot damn. We can just invent our own category of books <laughs> and assign it to 042, says Samantha. Mm. We should decide right now what we want 042 to be and then work to become the head of the Council of Librarians. I mean, I'm semi-qualified. <laughs> So I suppose I could. Um, I'm not sure I want to, though. I left that part of my life behind uh, many, many years ago. And now I do other things like draw shelves and shelves and shelves of bookies on the internets for lovely people. Anywho. <coughs> Excuse me. These shelves are start. Are these shelves starting to feel a little bit more bookish? Feeling a little bit more put. Will you come into focus, please? Feeling a little bit more booky. I feel like. Um, Dan says, "Don't forget me." As if I could ever forget you, Dan. You will always have a place on my council of librarians. <laughs> I'm just imagining us sort of as as like a group of shadowy figures wearing like big oversized robes and, you know, sort of sitting at a very imposing like boardroom table and, and we hereby declare that, <laughs> that the category of 042 will henceforth be used to put books about this thing <laughs> anyways they look full of wonderful books it's turned up yay i hope the books are wonderful i hope he's finding this little tome about bird watching in the local area to be quite uh to be quite helpful certainly There we go. Really, really ramming as many books as we can into this shelf. Just, just squeeze them in as best we can because there is, there is a limited amount of space happening in this, uh, in this, uh, this bookshop and they need to, they need to occupy as much shelf space as they can with books. You know, you know, the bookshop, not like this one in particular, because I made this one up for the purposes of artwork, but you know, the type of bookshop, the one where you go in and it's just an absolute treasure trove of just like super jam packed with stuff, books, just stacks of books on every possible surface. Trying to find anything is nearly impossible. But if you ask the person who works there, you just be like, Hey, yeah, I was just wondering, it's kind of, I realize it's kind of obscure, but I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for this one book of poetry that was published in like 1978 by this guy from Baltimore. He didn't publish anything else, but it had like a picture of a pigeon on the cover. Do you know the one? And the person just goes like zeros in right to where it is. And it's like, here you go. And you're like, how? How did you know this? <laughs> you know, like that, that's the kind of shop I'm imagining. Um, it's the kind of shop that you, you never actually realized was there until you walk past it one time. You go in, it has the, somehow the exact thing that you need that one time. And the next time you go past that street, the shop is completely empty as though it was never there. That's the, that's the kind of shop I'm going for here. Anyways, um, Aoife, hello, welcome in. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. It's lovely to see you. Hello, hello. Uh, Samantha says, hooded robes, large round, round librarian glasses, hair in tight buns, and the emblem of an index finger held in front of lips on all their regalia. Yes, indeed. Shh. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Absolutely perfect. Oh, I'm dizzy. How's everyone else doing? Oh. <coughs> mm. I don't know. I confess I'm not as voracious or fast of a reader as I used to be. 
um, in my, my younger days, like when I was, especially when I was a young and I read, oh, so very much. And one orangutan for good measure since turn of, hey, why not? <laughs> Um, I'm not as voracious as a, of a reader as I used to be, um, in part just because I think my, my, my brain is tired, but also, um, but also I never feel like I have enough time to just sit down and like read a book. Um, but also I think, I think I genuinely exhausted my, my like attention span uh, when I was a university student, and I never really quite regained it to the to the same degree, which is really sad. But also, I did a literature degree, so I had to read a lot of books, like a lot, a lot of books. So that kind of <laughs> that kind of might have something to do with it. Uh, but anyways, never mind. Yay, we've done. Okay, we've got like one bookshelf. <laughs> Done and dusted. Let's do some painting. Let's switch it up. Let's go to this enchanted forest and uh, put some color into it because why not? Okay, so basically I've got sort of like a line of trees and then I'm going to do like a night sky up here, I think. So maybe if I... Oh, should I put some stars in the night sky? Because I could do that. I could put some little stars in the night sky. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that real quick. Um... Eva says, I want, once went to a record stop, shop and asked for a specific album by PJ Harvey. Good choice. The guy was so excited that I asked for the album that he ended up giving it to me for half the price. Since I didn't have enough money with me, gotta love the people who love their job. That is super rad. That is super rad. I love that. That kind of thing is just so joyous. I love that for you, and I also love that that, that person was just so excited that somebody wanted that specific record. Um... Absolutely adorable. I'm just doing little dots for stars. Nothing too, nothing too flashy today. Just, just some little dots. Just there's some stars in the sky, cause you know. I just want to establish that it's a beautiful, clear night. Oh, anyways, that's really that's a really sweet story. Oh, that's nice. I hope you enjoyed the album. I hope the music was good. Um. I haven't, oh man, I used to, I used to love going to record stores. I don't, I don't have a record player record player anymore. Um, so there's less, there's less impetus for me to go to record shops. Um, and I don't know, my music listening habits are very weird these days. Mo most of the music, most of the new music that I end up listening to is like bands involving people I know or bands recommended by people I know who are in bands. <laughs> So a lot of it ends up coming out of their band camps anyways. Uh, I know someone who runs a record label that just does um, cassettes. And so I buy every release that they do because all of the music that they put out is absolutely stellar. They're called Beanie Tapes, by the way. Um, very, very good stuff. Uh, they haven't had a new release in a little while, but they've got a new one coming out, which is very, very exciting. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Um, it is made by a local lad. Uh, named Max, who um, is very, very good. So I'm sure it'll be uh, a rad record. Anyways, um, uh, he says, The Office, it experiences me asking for an album by John Lennon in a big music store, and the girl working there consulted the computer and asked me how to spell Lennon. Oh, and they had nothing by John Lennon. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I do. I've definitely had the experience of going to... Um, certainly, certainly in my younger years, going to a record shop and being like, hey, I was just wondering if you had this album and if you don't, if it would be possible to like order it in and come collect it. Um, and inevitably they ha sort of have a look through their like catalog of things they can order. And the answer is no, they've never heard of it. Are you sure it exists? Are you sure this is the name of an artist that exists? And I'm like, I'm sure, I'm sure. It's just been out of print since 1974 and was only ever released on vinyl and never in this country. Anyways, um, I mean, my own fault for asking for obscure artists. Nobody knows. Yeah, I'm sorry. John, John Le Le Lemon? Is that supposed to... Did you misspell Lemon there, Aoife? I think that's your problem. I think you meant John Lemon, who I've never heard of. 
but I think you meant Lemon. You might have better luck. Try searching for John Lemon and see if anything comes up for that, because you might have just misspelled it. I don't know. Anyways. Tee <laughs> Anywho. Um, I don't think these little dots have taken any time at all to dry, so I think I can go over them with some nighttime colored paint now. Uh, and I'm going to use this blue, because blue feels like an appropriate color for nighttime. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. There we go. Okay. Don't let me forget to take off the little masking fluid where I put the stars when the painting is done because there is, oh, every chance that I'll forget it was there. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like it would be good to not forget that, but, you know, whatever. That, um, that is like daytime sky, so that's going to need a second pass, but I might wait for this to dry down first so I can, so I can go on top of it and not sort of lift what's already there. So I'm going to have some more books in the meantime. Hooray. Look at me. I'm multitasking. I'm being so efficient today. Oh my goodness. Hell yeah. I love it. Huh. <sighs> Anyways, let me grab another sip out of my beverage, which is delicious. Delightful. Love that for me. Okay. Um, what's everybody up to this week? Do you have any do you have any exciting plans? Are you doing anything super thrilling? Are you having a good time? I hope you're having a good time. I feel like I've made this shelf kind of too um wide. That feels that feels weird to me. I'm gonna add a little I'm gonna add a little separation here so this is this is its own shelf. Um Ooh, Aoife says, I've got a golden album hanging up to, hanging, uh, next to me from Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe, both band and album name from 1989. Friend of my dad's was there meant, really? Wow. And I found the album in there, in our shed. I felt this probably happier on my, I know some of those names. That's rad as heck. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I haven't I haven't had a record player in many, many years. Um I used to do like when they would do like record store day every year, we used to go see what, what like exclusives and interesting things we could get out of it, but um it feels kind of it feels kind of like there's not really much point to buying vinyl records when I don't actually have anything to play them on, so I just I just don't. Um anymore. I used to, my, when I lived in Canada, I had the most, oh, the most amazing, like, stereo system. The record player was amazing. It's broken. It, it died. Um, and it turns out it was very expensive to fix, so I just didn't. Um, but also by that point, the internet was good enough that I could get most of the things that I owned vinyl records of. I could get sort of digitally kind of thing. Um, and the ones that, that weren't officially released digitally, someone had made MP3s of that I downloaded from their WordPress blog. And oh, I'm so grateful for that. Uh, namely, there's this one album from like the 1970s from a Canadian jazz flautist named Mo Kaufman that was one of my favorite records when I was a little child, which is very normal of me. <laughs> um, and I still really love that record. I think it's full of lots of really good funky jams. And... Uh, I was glad to have found, like, a digital version of it so I can still sometimes listen to it. I think I still have it downloaded somewhere to this machine, I hope. Uh, my coffees did. Sag, that coffee was really tasty. I'm, I'm going to have to drink my tea instead, which is also really tasty. But I miss you, coffee. <sighs> Anyways. Um, Aoife says, I only did half the procrastination I usually, I usually do today, so I did about half of what I planned to do. I'm quite proud of that. Good job. Hell yeah. That's a good, that's honestly a really good ratio. I said to myself, I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do like four tasks during the day today, and I think I managed to do 
three. So I consider that a win. I reckon. I reckon that's a win. Um, it's better than I did one or I did none or I pushed myself too hard and I did like six, but I was too tired to stream. So I think, I think that's, I will consider that a win personally. Um, okay. This book barely fits on this shelf. It's a little too tall. This is going to absolutely destroy my eyes and brain when it comes time to, um, to paint. I am absolutely certain of that. Oh, goodness gracious. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be rough. I was going to work through 20 pages of lecture notes and I did about eight of them. Hey, good job. Good job. Hell yeah. You should feel very proud of that. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but I always find Mondays tend to be, tend to be a slow day for me because I think I'm just getting back into the routine of like weekday activity. Um, and so to that end, when I tend to, I tend to find like Mondays, I do like this much and then Tuesdays I do this much and then Wednesdays I do everything and Thursdays I do as much as I can and then it's Friday again. Um, that tends to be how my weeks go. And then Saturdays, Saturdays and Sundays are kind of like, it really depends on what other things I have to do. Speaking of, I think it's this Saturday. I believe it is this Saturday because, oh my God, it's almost March. Oh my God, it's almost March. This Saturday, I'm going to be, um, on Saturday, I'm going to be on friend of the channel Kirby's channel playing uh, a little improvised RPG called You Awaken in a Strange Place with some very, very cool people. Uh, so if that's the kind of thing that you might want to, oh, and you'll get to see my face as well. So that's exciting. <laughs> but, uh, if that's the kind of thing that you're into, uh, feel free to pop by and say hello, come join us. It's going to be a really fun time. We're really looking forward to it. Um, so, so yeah, that's something happening later on this weekend. Um, I'll make an announcement about it in the discord closer to the time as well. Um, and we'll, you know, sort of pop in there when we're live. Um, to let you know, and I'm, re I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, anytime I get to do stream things with Kirby is a really good time. He's, he's a very good egg, a very fun uh, human being and very good at this kind of stuff. So it's going to be super rad. <laughs> Anyways, um, Sen's taking a break because what did she do? The mock-up is looking good and going in the right direction. Hell yeah, I love that for you. Don't think I need too many changes. That's awesome. I'm already too knackered to make those. Hey, it's like, it's the evening in our respective time zones. You're allowed to take a break. My goodness. I wish I would have time, but I'm out and about on the weekend. That's okay. The VOD will be going up on Kirby's YouTube channel at some point fairly soon, subsequent to the, um the stream. So if you're not able to make it, I will pop, pop a link to the VOD as well. So you can check it out over on his YouTube. You have a face says Aoife. Aoife, you, you know my face because my face looks exactly like that. <laughs> um, I still have the lingering cold to deal with and no energy. Oh, you poor dear. Definitely. Um, definitely give yourself a rest then. The best way to get better when you're sick is to rest because that's what allows your body to do it's healing and betterment. Um, uh, Aoife says, I follow Kirby already. Look at that. Yay. <laughs> I've been on your YouTube as well. Yes, exactly. My face is all over my YouTube. So if you like my face, there you go. Uh, I know Sammy's face has said it's a wonderful face. It's certainly, you know, it allows me to see and smell and speak and eat and drink. It stops my brain from falling out of my head. So for all of those reasons, I feel like it is an acceptable human face. Um, you know, it's, it, it does what it needs to do. So that's nice. Um, it smiles and, and laughs and sometimes cries and makes silly noises. Faces are amazing. They do so much. Truly they do. Everyone here has a wonderful face, says Samantha. No, you. You're all breathtaking. So there. Anyways. Okay. Gonna keep on keeping on with the putting of the books. Gonna pop a little vertical, no, sorry, horizontal stack here. 
this stack is looking precarious, but there's one just offsetting it to balance things out. And then we're going to put, I think some, somebody's cleaned out this shelf recently, so there's not quite as much hanging out in it, but this book's kind of big, so it kind of needs to go on its side like that. Um, and also because I think it looks cool. <laughs> this shelf is just, is just going to have just regular old bookies just lined up like so. This one's a little bit skinnier. This one's a little bit longer. There we go. So many, so many little book, so many little books. This, honestly. <sighs> Have I made a mistake? Is this, is this a bad idea? This is a bad idea. Um, uh, Aoife says, uh, apparently all Brits sound alike to me. Am, do I, do I count? Am I included? Um, I did have someone who didn't realize that I wasn't from the UK a little while ago. And I mean, I guess, I don't know, I guess not being able to discern accents is, or being able to discern accents is potentially somewhat of a skill, but I was honestly shocked because no one ever thinks I'm from the UK because I'm not. And I don't think, I don't think I sound British personally. But I did also, one time I was visiting like the American Midwest and I was in a Wendy's or something and this lady was like, ah, excuse me, are you from England? And I was like, I'm Canadian. Thank you for noticing. Why is a stranger talking to me? I'm scared. <laughs> it was really weird. It was really, really weird. Also, I was like 19 at the time, so I was even more shy than I am now. And I am a shy little plum. Uh, when I'm out and about in the real world, like, believe me, I am. <laughs> so that was very bizarre and a little bit, a little bit worrying, but it was, it was a, it was a fun question though. Are you from England? No. The answer was no. Um, if it says, took me quite some time last stream to realize it wasn't even your voice I could hear, but the one that used to... Oh, God, don't remind me, Aoife. Okay, so if anyone was here on Friday, I raided into a friend of the channel, Gracie Ghosty, who's a lovely art streamer, if you're not familiar with their work. Um, but I forgot to end stream for, like, 15, 20 minutes. Um, so my stream was technically still broadcasting for, like, the last... For, like, the last chunk of stream... <laughs> Oh, it was so embarrassing. Um, and then, and then I was going to like, to like log out of that computer to switch over to the laptop to like go get lunch and stuff. And I was like, oh, I've been streaming this whole time. Oh no. <laughs> cause, and I'll tell you for why I will tell you exactly. Cause a couple of people very kindly like messaged me to be like, I think you're still live, uh, which I really appreciate. Uh, but I'll tell you for why if you, if you don't stream, um, Twitch has changed the interface by which, um, by which you, like, find a channel to raid. I, I, I think what they've done is largely fairly good because I think it's, it's, it's helpful to see a bit more of a preview of this, the channel that you're raiding into potentially. I kind of find it a little bit distracting with the amount of information that's being thrown at me from that screen, honestly. It does, it's not really compatible with the way my brain wants to run, um, because, because my brain is the unique way in which my brain is funded, uh, does not agree with this, but it might just take some getting used to. I'm sure it'll just take some getting used to. But the other thing that it does, it's once you hit the like raid button, it opens a new browser tab with the channel that you just raided. Um, which is great because it means that it's right there, except I've been getting around this by, I always have the moderation screen open in another tab. So the stream opening in a second tab means that I've got two tabs running at the same time with the same stream that I just raided into. And so the audio is like in stereo and it's really distracting. So I'm like scrambling to close one of the tabs and then go put a raid message in and say like, hello to the new streamer. And with all of these new steps in place and this new visual interface and all of this new information that I have to take in when I'm trying to do a raid, I forgot to press end stream because I had extra steps that I had to do that weren't part of my usual doing a stream at the end of a raid, uh, doing a raid at the end of a stream ritual. 
due to the unique way in which my brain is funded. So hopefully that won't happen again. <laughs> I think we'll be okay this time because now I'm very aware of it because that happened one time. Um, though it's not as bad as, oh, bless. This one time I was watching a streamer and they, so they had, you know, they were doing like, I think, I think it was a gaming stream and they were doing, you know, some, some game stuff. So there was like, there was the game screen and then there was like them sort of in a little square in the corner on their webcam as, um, folks often do on stream. And they went to, they ended the stream, but they decided to just end stream rather than doing a raid out. Um, and as such, instead of being sort of like shunted into whatever channel they raided, um, they were just like, okay. They, so they went to like big, big webcam screen for the, like, you know, thanks for watching and goodbye a couple minutes at the end of the stream. Um, and then they were like, okay, bye everybody. But then they forgot to hit end stream. And I didn't realize because I think I had a couple other tabs open and I'd maybe gone to the kitchen and I came back like 10, 15 minutes later and they were still live streaming, but just sitting there. It was just a live stream of them sitting quietly at their computer, like occasionally typing things on the keyboard and like looking at things and absolutely not noticing that they were still live. And I was like, should I say something in chat? So I just popped into chat. I was like, I was, <laughs> I just popped into chat. I felt so bad, but I was like, um, I, I think you need to hit end stream. And they were like, oh shit, sorry. And then <laughs> ended the stream. I felt so bad. Oh, poor thing. Um, but at least, at least somebody <laughs> noticed, but there were a few minutes where I was like, should I say something? I should say something. Should I though? Should I, mm, I don't know. Is it going to be embarrassing? But I should say something. So I said something. Um, and I think it was the right thing to do because they might have gone on for like another hour or so of like hanging out. I don't know what their plans were and not realizing. Oh no. Imagine you get cozy. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I do. I know someone, I know someone else who, um, already had sort of a bit of an audience from like other things that they did. So their very first live stream on Twitch had like a reasonable number of people. I think there were like 50 people there for their first live stream. Right. Um, and, uh, but because of the whole learning to do a live stream is a bit of a learning curve. They were like, okay, goodbye everybody and stream. And then just proceeded to have the thanks for watching screen up for about 15 minutes while they were having just like a regular conversation with their partner and did not realize that they were still live. And again, thankfully they like noticed and some people had alerted them to the fact that you're still live. We can hear you. And they were like, Oh no. And so they had to delete the VOD cause you know, it was like a personal conversation. Um, thankfully I wasn't there for that because the, the second hand, oh no, of that would have made me feel so bad because they were actually doing like, they were actually talking to someone about things related to like their everyday lives that they maybe didn't want to have preserved for all time on the internet. You know what I mean? But, uh, thankfully people, people are generally, I think, fairly good about that kind of thing of like, Hey, we can tell that this wasn't intended for public consumption. So we just want to let you know, you might want to delete that. Um, which is really good, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, Dan says, should have waited for them to pick their nose and then clip it. No, Dan, that's mean. I could never. Do you know? Listen, okay. For anyone who isn't here for the game streams or didn't see last Friday's game stream, I was going for an achievement in Hollow Knight that I hadn't gotten already, which was the, um which was the neglect achievement, which basically there's, there's a character fairly early on in the game that you rescue from the clutches of like a big creature. And then you get into a boss fight, uh, like a mini boss fight with the creature. And then this person responds to you rescuing them in a kind of bizarre way. Um, and the neglect achievement is to not rescue this guy. And this has, this has, um, consequences. I want to say consequences, but the consequences are actually beneficial to the gameplay later on in the game. Um, so I chose not to rescue the guy. And then if you, if you do a couple of other steps and then you come back to where that person was, they, um, like have sadly passed, shall we say. 
Um, but I'm trying to tip the karmic scales by... There's another character. Um, again, I don't want to spoil it, but there's another character who is is an NPC who, through uh, various canon events of the game... Uh, you you encounter and then they they die, but there is a way to rescue them effectively, um, and it involves basically an ignoring one of the earlier encounters with them, and so I'm hoping in this sort of like fairly speed ran playthrough to um, uh, to get to get the neglect achievement which I've gotten of not rescuing the one guy. But in so doing, rescuing the other person. So the balance is restored, as it were. But um but it's it's a it's a better balance because the person you save is a better person <laughs> in this case. Um making that kind of mistake terrifies me, says turn of oh no. It is to be fair, I've seen it literally like once. In my whole life as a person who watches a lot of Twitch streams and streams a lot on Twitch, it's very rare and, um, and, and I, I highly doubt it would ever happen to you. Um, how could you, says Eva? Oh no. Listen, listen, it was not easy and I cried a little bit, um, but in a fun way. You should watch my, you should watch my Hollow Knight streams if you're into that kind of thing. Um. <laughs> Samantha says the only downside is that you'll miss out on 400 dream essence which doesn't pre prevent you from getting everything essence is needed for exactly uh, Sammy collecting all of the infinity geo perfectly balanced as all things should be yay I would like infinity geo please uh, geo is the name of the currency in hollow knight um, and uh, and uh, I wish I wish I could I wish I could convert the amount of geo that I have in Hollow Knight to GBP because I could really use like any money. Anyways, um, but uh, yeah. Anywho, um, I am not a monster. Samantha's correct. The character who Sammy let die didn't want Sammy's help. Any they didn't. They don't want your help. So you know, honestly, I'm just doing what they want. Um, they, they died a warrior's death, which is probably what they wanted. So, respect. What, whatever, whatever amount of respect is, is deserved for that person, I, I can, I give that. Um, I'm gonna take a big sip of my tea, and then I'm gonna go for a quick BRB. We'll finish this off, and we'll do a little bit more of banting. Did you see the consequences of the neglect achievement in the game? Uh, I missed that bit of the stream, says Turnip. I did. I did. We got the achievement. Um, I got I got at least into the double digits of playing, playing. you know, sort of um, bounce the, uh, bounce the, the, the little, little guy's head in, in the air that is dead. Uh, and I felt a little bit bad about that, but also it's real fun because it goes bad, dude. Yeah, anyways. Um, I thought he'd just be missing. Haha, -ha, more full me is his turn. Maybe I should find that bit and clip it for you because oof. Uh, anyways, I'm going to quickly VRB. <sighs> well, oh, 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 noises. Hello? Hello, my moderator slash spouse is home. Uh, say goodbye to the BRB music, everyone. We're going back to art camera. Hello, art camera. Uh, let's finish up this bank of books, and then I'll do a little bit more painting. But first, I have to greet my moderator slash spouse who is home, and I love him very much. Hello, sunshine. I did. I did. How are you? You good? Yeah. I love you. Here. Get yourself warm. Go make yourself a cup of tea or something if you want to. Uh -huh. Anyways. Um, 
Oh, we have some hellos from chat. From moderator slash spouse, Samantha. Um, uh, let's see, Turnip says hi. Uh, lots of other people are here. BRB music makes me emotional again, says Aoife. Oh, goodness gracious, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it's a good kind of emotion. Uh, Sledge says hello to his adoring crowd. Uh, Turnip's heading out, but enjoy the rest of the stream. Thank you so much for stopping by, Turnip. It was lovely to see you, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day slash time. Thank you, thank you for hanging out. Um, I'm so tired already. I don't like it to send. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, but oh my god, that is such a mood. That is absolute mood. Um, this, we're just, we're gonna go in, in, this is, this is an opposite shelf. This shelf is opposite to the other shelves. We're going to have the books going this way. Nice sort of skinny little tome there. Maybe something a little bit shorter. Doot. And then some sort of hanging out on their sides of this way. There we go. Yay, shelves. Um, Samantha says, speaking of music making one emotional, has anyone else watched the terrible Netflix live action remake of Avatar? Oh no, is it terrible? Oh no. Also, no, I haven't seen it, but I literally haven't seen any Avatar ever. At all. I know nothing about it. Um, it completely, I think it was, I think it was entirely on like places on television that were not available for me to watch the entire time that it was on pretty much. So it completely passed me by. Um, so I have, like, zero familiarity with it, unfortunately. I'm vaguely aware of some of, like, the characters' names, but I don't really know who they are or anything about them. Um, I know there's a boy named Aang, and that's about it. And there's some kind of creature... There's some kind of creature that's real cute looking. It's, like, some sort of... I don't know. It looks like some sort of fluffy dog cow. Bison, it's a bison? I don't I don't know, sweetheart. Dog cow, I think, is a pretty good description of what a bison looks like, don't you? No. <laughs> I didn't listen, it's stylized. I didn't know what it was supposed to be. It looks like some kind of dog cow creature, and it's very cute and fluffy and it flies. I know that. <laughs> Uh, Samantha says it's really bad, but there was one scene that really got me in the feels. The scene was cheating by using an instrumental version of uh, Leaves from the Vine, which is the bit that really hit me in the feels. Oh no! A flying bison, Samantha confirms. Appa! Oh, cute! What an absolute friend. I love bison. They're so stinking cute. But yeah, sorry. I was like dog cow because I'd never seen the show and I don't know. I'm extrapolating based on, like, beautiful fan arts that my friends have done, okay? There was literally one, I think, um, friend of the channel Josie did a fan art of that creature, the uh, like, literally, like, yesterday or the day before on her Instagram. Uh, and it was very, very cute. And I was like, oh, get a load of this absolute friend. But also, I don't know what this show's from, but I, I love this artwork and I want to support you, so have some engagement. So I gave her some likes and some comments and stuff. <laughs> because we're all dying, Squirtle. Uh, the sequel series, uh, Cora has a polar bear dog. <laughs> Polar bear dog Naga, which in my humble opinion is even cuter than Appa, don't at me. I don't, I can't, I cannot at you because I cannot confirm or deny this. Because I haven't seen either show, so I just have to take your word for it at this stage. Um, I'm literally going to Josie's page to find you the artwork because, I mean... You can see I was why I was in my in my memory and again I do not have a very like my recall is very crappy. My recall sucks, okay? So trying to remember what this was, I was like it's some kind of dog cow. Because again, I've never seen this show and I have impaired recall. Because of the unique way in which my brain is funded. So I feel like I did okay remembering that it was somewhere in that vicinity, okay? Anyways, go follow Josie if you're not. Her art is great. She's cooler than me. <laughs> Anyways, Naga is best girl, says Sen. I, I believe you. 
And I don't know. Anyways, uh, the showrunners of the live action show seem to have completely missed the point of the original. Oh, is it? Now, I'm given to understand that there was a film that happened some years ago that indeed people have basically disavowed the existence of because it's very bad. Um, so I guess my question is, and maybe I'm, I'm, I'm poking a, 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 a bee's nest by asking, but, um, <laughs> is it as bad as that was? One moment, please. Oh, sorry about that. I did not want to sneeze. I knew I could feel that a large sneeze was coming and I did not want to do that into the microphone because I didn't think that would be pleasant. What's that, love? Thank you. He blessed me. <laughs> Anyways, the, the show is better than the film, at least. Oh, well, I'm, at least I'm glad to hear that. Yay. At this stage, at this stage, perhaps that, perhaps that is some, some small consolation. A little, a little tiny bit of a win, perhaps. I don't know. I really, I really can't say. Because I don't know. I'm just gonna have a whole set of very, very short little books here. And then we'll stack some taller some taller ones sideways on top of it, like so. Just really ramming all of the books we can into these shelves, essentially. Um, this one is just going to be comprised entirely of books on their sides. Because, why not? Is it good for the book spines? No, they should not be... They should not be organized in this way. It is really not good to to leave your books leaning on their sides it it warps the spines of the books and generally it's not good for like overall book health but you know for a period of time it's fine it happens and hey you know whatever the book the book still has inherent value uh anyways um currently debating getting a digital pattern of the cosplay i am making Woo! sounds fun i know i'll probably get there myself but the skirt panels are not falling right and it's annoying me mm. i wonder if there's like a tutorial you can look up you can look up for like the style of garment you're making i find that useful sometimes i i don't do paper patterns so i'm not the person to ask anyways <laughs> um uh, apparently jesse gender released a video yesterday and they basically had everything i was thinking about how bad it was well i'm glad to hear that that the consensus is that it's bad, I suppose, but I'm sorry to hear that it's bad. Does that make sense? I don't know. Anyways, let's, let's pop another layer of blue onto here. See how we, see how we go with it. Will this piece be good? I don't know. I don't know. I never know whether or not a piece will be good when I start, but still, still feels worth starting. Uh, Mooney, thank you for the unlurk. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Very nice to see you. I hope you're having a good Monday. I did absolutely refresh my email uh, while we were on BRB to see whether or not I'd heard anything about the uh, the weird like Google issues I was having, and the answer is a resounding no. Uh, I realized that like it's only been a it's only been a day like it's been a day, but it's only been a day. So they did say that it usually takes about two days to get a response. So I'm shouldn't be panicking or anything right now. And honestly, if, if, if worse comes to worst, it's just, it is what it is. And you know, I'll have to find a different workaround for what I wanted to do with that second account, but it's still a bit of a pain in the backside because frankly, like what, like what, like what? I'm sorry, what? It's just, it's just annoying. And it felt a little bit mean, honestly. Um, because there was no reason for disabling my second Google account, which literally was like my business inquiries email and and a second YouTube account for things that that I don't that I'm not going to put on my main channel, um, but are entirely fine to, to anyways. Stupid. Um, Sen says the pattern would come with complete instructions, and I would not have to figure out all the placements for the embroidery as well. I guess it depends on how much you want to do yourself in that case. That's all. Anyways, Mooney's doing good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Um, hope you've got an exciting good week ahead. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope your Monday was good. I'm going to uh, mute for just one second. I figured y'all didn't want to hear me blowing my nose. Um, and I'm still fighting the remnants of being sick. 
It just... It just never ends. <laughs> Anyways, I do feel... I've talked about this before in terms of, like, the general state of the entertainment industry and, like, the mainstream entertainment industry and streaming and Hollywood and TV and all that jazz. And I just think that... I dropped my, um... I dropped my paintbrush. So just give me a second. Where did it go? Oh my god, where did it go? How far did it fall? Oh, for heaven's sakes. Paintbrush. It was clean. The paintbrush was clean, for clarity. I did wash it out first. Before I dropped it. Losing my mubbles. Uh, I, I genuinely can't see. Oh, okay, that's why. It had entangled itself in the cables under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh beans at least at least my palette and um and brush were clean before i did that heck anyways um probably sickness brain talking but i also hate patterning how did i stick with this hobby so long since then i don't know i've never been a fan of paper patterns but i think it's the same part of my brain that doesn't like the types of baking where you have like a big surface and you're like rolling dough out. I also don't like having to cut out big pieces of paper. I don't know. I just, mm, not a fan. Much, much more into the kinds of, um, the kinds of sewing projects where honestly for like, for a lot of the historical stuff that I do, it, it is rectangles and triangles to the extent that I just take a spreadsheet I mark out, I make sort of a grid on my spreadsheet that is the dimensions of the fabric that I've got, and then I work out from there how many centimeters slash inches I need each piece to be, and then work out sort of puzzle piece-wise where the rectangles and triangles need to be to most effectively use this piece of fabric, or how little fabric can I get away with to make this garment that is predominantly rectangles and triangles. How can I, how can I use this fabric piece to greatest effect? Which is very historical in, in terms of approach because, you know, the making of textiles was a lot more labor intensive and, um, expensive before like pre-industrial stuff. Um, and as such, it, you know, garments weren't as throwaway as they often are these days. Um, even expensive garments. So, like, you wanted every, every, like, square inch of fabric to be accounted for in some way, you know what I mean? Um, and so to that end, I like having projects where, you know, I know that I can use sort of like a 60 inch by, si by 60 inch square and produce a shirt out of it by placing the pieces strategically such that it measures all of the measurements work out as they should for me. Anyways. <sighs> um, has a cape pattern I could use for at least two more plan. Ooh, I mean, capes are rad and you should just make capes anyway. So like wholeheartedly approve of cape making. Um, I would love to wear more capes, but I'm, I'm not fancy enough for it. And I'm absolutely afraid that when I'm swanning about in my cape, I'm just going to be knocking things over everywhere I go. Cause it's, they kind of take up space and that would make me nervous. Um, so maybe no. <laughs> Anyways, um, that also leaves out frock coats and honestly, I get nervous going out wearing like fairly voluminous petticoats, which I do anyways, because they make me feel good. But anywho, um, can also buy Baldur's Gate 3 because my brain is screaming at me to do it, but that costs seven times as much as the pattern, <laughs> which is seven euros 99. I mean, Baldur's Gate 3 is certainly a very different pastime if you want to do something different um but uh but yeah I can't really I can't really comment on that because I haven't played Baldur's Gate 3 either um I I have a partner who has and so I know I know what the character creation screen looks like in Baldur's Gate 3 I've seen some of the I've seen some of the gameplay I've seen I've seen one one sort of cutscene that happens when if you romance one of the characters and it's very funny. 
Um, I don't want to. I don't want to give too much away. But this one character, apparently, if you if you have a <clears throat> Uh, a romantical encounter with them afterwards. They'll be like, okay, come on, time to get up, let's go! We've got things to do! <laughs> and you're like, you're still nude! <laughs> and you're and you're like, ah, oh, that was fantastic. And they're like, yes, of course it was! Now get dressed, we have to go! <coughs> it's so funny. Um, anyways. Is it the bear scene? No, it's not the bear scene. Um, I'll let you know if Sledge gets the bear scene. Sledge, try to get the bear scene in Baldur's Gate. He says no, which is very disappointing because I think it would be funny. Also, I mean, I mean, it's a literal bear as opposed to just like a, 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 a cuddly beardy man. Um, and I would say realistically, the, the latter appears, appeals to me more than the, fur, the, the former. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Yes, Lazel, that was the one who was like, who, when you're like, when you're like, that was wonderful. She's like, yes, of course it was. Now let's go. It's like, girl, absolutely no interest in, in lingering and having a cuddle. She's like, okay, come on, let's go. It's breakfast time. Uh, it's very funny. Uh, Halson is super easy to romance. Like basically if you talk to him once, he's ready to go to bed. Aww. That's nice. Uh, he seems like fun. I like my favorite, my favorite character. I don't really know all of the characters, but my favorite character obviously is like the big strong lady. She's very pretty. And, um, if I played the game, that's probably who I would romance. Uh, I binned off that playthrough after that point. Oh goodness gracious. No. Were you, were you disappointed by the fact that your uh, <laughs> that the character you romance didn't want to snuggle? Because I would be disappointed. Because you know I'm a cuddly person. I'd be like, oh, can I at least have a hug? And she'd be like, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but Carlac, on the other hand, is a sweetie, which is the big strong lady who's just... <sighs> she seems lovely. I would romance her for sure. Anyways. um, But I haven't played that game either, so no more comments from me on it because I don't know... This is just going to be... I'm just going to make my things seem super easily for myself. This section is just a whole bunch of books from an entire series of books that are all the same size and shape. <laughs> super easy. She does get more cuddly as you progress the romance, Lazelle does, apparently, says Samantha. Oh, that's nice. She kind of... I guess she kind of... They... Y you get physical and then she warms up to you. Some people are like that. That's, that's valid. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Okay. Anyways, um, but, uh, yeah, I am making my way back through Celeste again off stream because I think I've mentioned I want to play the Celeste, uh, DLC on, uh, cozy game stream time, but, um, I, uh, I have to complete a playthrough again because my old playthrough that I had done everything but the DLC vanished. Uh, so I had to, uh, I had to, <coughs> I had to restart basically, uh, from scratch. And so I'm making my way through. I'm pretty close to the end, I think, but I, I only have time sort of for, for gaming in the week to kind of do like a, you know, sort of an hour a day or so. So, uh, it's taking a little bit of time, uh, because, it's been a while since I played Celeste and remembering how all of the controls work is an adventure, especially when I'm used to how the controls work in other platformy games like Hollow Knight and Ori games and having to remember a different set of controls is, uh, I play, I replayed Daddish and Daddish 2 while I was on holidays over, over the, like the Christmas break as well. That was really fun. Anywho, um, I'm looking forward to starting Final Fantasy VI soon as well. And having access to the internet where I can just look up that one bit that I always used to get stuck on back in the 90s is going to feel really good. Because I don't know if a lot of people remember and younger viewers will not remember it very well. Don't, 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 let's talk about our ages. But, um, but back in the 90s, if you were like stuck on a bit of a video game or you needed a tutorial for a video game, you couldn't just go to like, 
You couldn't just go to, like, a game journalism website and look up a walkthrough. You couldn't just go to the game's wiki and find out the location of this thing if you were missing it, or you couldn't figure out your way through this maze. Um, you had to go out and buy, like, a magazine that would have a walkthrough on how to do the thing. If you were lucky, you were able to find a magazine that had a walkthrough on the thing that you were stuck on. Otherwise, you were just stuck forever. It's it's tricky. Anyways, um, uh, Samantha says, I try to romance Carlock, but Shadowheart keeps on being there, being Shadowheart. That is the gothest of goth names. My goodness. Um, Sledge says, I realized I'd cock something up and it would be unable to get Carlock to join the party, so I restarted. Oh. Honestly, this man has his priorities in the right place. Um, you slaughter one grove full of druids and you suddenly people think, th think poorly of you. Oh! oh my god, video game tip lines. Yes. Yes, you could literally call a number. You had to ring up a phone number and be like, hey, do you know how to get past this bit of this game? Literally. This is what, this is what we had to go through before we could just Google it. <sighs> it was a uh, it was a time. <laughs> it was definitely a time. Okay. Adding more books. So many books. So many books. Too many books. I'm going to put some books on their side because I think it's fun. Oh boy, somebody somebody outside my house is being super loud. I hope that's not being picked up on the mic, but my goodness, some people just really some people just really project with their voices. I don't think I project that much. Like I'm right next to the microphone and I don't think I'm being that loud, but thank you for the posture check. How did you know I was absolutely slumped over? Thank you very much indeed. I'm gonna do a little stretch. Thank you, Samantha. Oh ow. Oh, something is wrong with my right shoulder. It is getting better, but oh my god, it's taken like two months and it's still sore. Oh, <sighs> Anyways, um, one moment again, please. Sorry. I will say, I never rang up one of those, like, telephone lines where you could literally call Je someone. You could literally... <laughs> screen it's not showing up on my thing as to who did it is it no it really isn't sledge darling thank you so much for the anana <laughs> we do have stream stickers now by the way this is anana this is one of we've got three so far um thank you for thank you for finding anana and thank you for the stream sticker sweetheart i hope y'all enjoyed that um for some reason my plop, chat was an auto plop, plop, plop. <laughs> thank you thank you for uh thank you for placing a uh for placing a kiwi sticker and yes this the sound associated with the kiwi sticker is literally just me going plap 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 because because yep <laughs> anyway thank you so much for the stickers i'm very very appreciated i hope y'all enjoy them um i will be as time goes by, I am looking to add more to the sticker roster as we go. We'll see how many we end up with. Um, but for now, we've got three. And that was two of them. Um, as you may recall, we painted, I think it was last Thursday, we painted Anana, uh, who is, of course, my paintbrush holder, which is why Anana is holding a paintbrush. There is an Anana emote as well now, which uh, I did after last Thursday's stream. If you can see here, just sliding in there, <laughs> Je suis une anana. and the Kiwis having a delicious drink of tea. Oh, yay. I love that for them. Kiwi birds are so precious. I really, I feel, I feel an affinity with Kiwi birds because they're, they're round. They're, they're, they're a little peculiar and also, there are certain things that come naturally to most birds that, uh, that kiwi birds cannot do. And as someone who, whose brain is funded in a very unique way, I also feel, I, I also relate to that. 
Like, there's something about flightless birds that feel very relatable to me as someone who, uh, someone who struggles with some things that apparently just some people just know how to do. Uh, so yeah, anyways. Uh, Nick says, so if pineapples are on sale, is it, is it anana, anana goodbye? Uh, it is ananana, ananana goodbye. Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> that is a deep cut, but we got there. Thank you, Nix. Um, also, thank you for all of the emotes in chat, you beautiful people. I hope people are enjoying the new emotes. I'm having a lot of fun making them. Um, I thought the kiwi bird was was a fun time, um, and it was it was an interesting it was an interesting exercise trying to get Anana to like fit as an emote. So I ended up just doing basically his face because when I did like a like Anana's entire body as an emote, it was just unrecognizably too tiny. Like you couldn't see what was going on because it's only 28 pixels by 28 pixels, which is a really small amount of space. Um, darling. Oh, hell yeah. Sunishan just subscribed. <laughs> Sledge, my dearest darling, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Sen. Thank you. Thank you. Sen, enjoy your emotes and stuff. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That uh that was a that was a nice surprise. Thank you, dear. Are you are you asking if I would like a cup of tea? Uh yeah, a small builders, please. Thank you. Anyways. Um Ooh, Sen says, bought the patterns. Um also got the pattern, the pattern for Adult Pura in Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, cool! I for a second, as I was like, my brain was skimming it, and I thought you were you were saying that you'd bought Tears of the Kingdom. I was like, I'm surprised you haven't played that already. You like the Zelda stuff. Um, well, that's really cool. Oh, I hope you have fun with that. I think I think in this case, probably having a pattern, especially something that'll be like a transferable garment shapes will be will be uh, a good show it will be useful um incidentally <laughs> um if anybody wants if anybody is interested in like historical garments and stuff and would be interested in anything from the books the cut of women's clothes and the cut of men's clothes which is like a fairly comprehensive overview of fashion from I think like 1600 to 1900 or something like that it covers a ridiculous amount of time and it's the only place that I found where I could find a pattern that was useful for a specific garment that I'm looking to make from around 1720 um uh I have both of these books as pdfs now um so if anybody needs if anyone would find that to be a useful reference I don't think they're still I don't think they're like actively in print um, so if that's something that, that anyone would find like a useful reference, let me know and I'll try and see if I can get, get a copy to you. Um, but anyways, I try a bit of Breath of the Wild, but some of the mechanics are just not for me, says Sen. Interesting. I haven't played it, but watched Yemeth play it. Sometimes the best experience is watching someone else play a video game. There are certain games that I know I would be like rubbish at or wouldn't really enjoy the gameplay of, but I love seeing other people play. So like for sure. Um... But, uh, but yeah, Sen says I have one pattern that I use like 90% of the time, but it's not helping with the skirt panels right now. Ah, oh, boo. Well, in that case, I hope that something that having the actual like bespoke pattern for it will be, will be of use to you. Okie dokie. This, all of the, all of the books on this shelf are kind of leaning over and maybe there's just one book on this shelf. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking possibly one of these shelves might have like a really sad little house plant on it. <laughs> Just, like, hiding in one of the... Maybe, like, this one right here just has a little plant and maybe some little vines hanging down. I think... Oh, that would be cute. Uh, hell yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, Samantha says, if you didn't get on with Breath of the Wild, you might find Tears of the Kingdom easier to get into because you can just do such absurdly fun things with the powers. That, that I think, is part of what I found... Having looked at it but not played it... I haven't played Breath of the Wild either. Um... I played. I think the only Zelda game I've played from beginning to end was uh, was Link's Awakening for the Switch. Um, but I find I I found watching other people play Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, all of the like, 
all of the like building things and doing all that stuff I find really kind of intimidating because that is the kind of thing that I'm generally not good at in games. Like if you're making me sort of like I can run and jump and climb things like till the cows come home. But if you're asking me to like build a bridge, I'm like, (laughs) my brain hurts. Oh no. (laughs) Anyways. Um, Uh, I'm going to uh, mute for just a second. I'm sorry. Alrighty. So we finished all of the books behind the little guys. Good. Uh, let's see if we can fill in a little bit more Night Sky now. Um, I will re-wet, re- 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 re-wet my brush a tittle bit. Get some get some paint onto it. I think I maybe added too much water to my brush. Because it is... There's just a puddle. There's just a puddle in the paint pan now. Oh, a tea is coming over. Hold up. Let me let me scoot, scoot my old teacup out of the way. So there's space for the new teacup. Hello, darling. Oh, you used the... Moomin mug. Nice. So Thank you, Sunshine. What you are saying... <clears throat> mm? What you are saying is that mm? your, mu- your brush... Yes. Is very moist. Darling, that's mean. But moist. Honey. It says moist. Okay, you can stop shouting the, the you can stop shouting the word that for some reason some people have an aversion to, but but yes. Okay, just give us Casey. Mwah, I love you. Okay, you can go now. Anyways. Uh Sen's playing Immortals Phoenix Rising. Oh, I remember that one. Yes, 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 yes. Um Banter between Prometheus and Zeus is very good at it, apparently. Oh, fun. Um, <laughs> Phoenix Rising was such a fun game, says Samantha. I should probably finish the DLCs at some point. I've Again, this is another one that I have not played, um, but it looks like a good time. I never, I actually never finished uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. That was, that was one that I played through on stream. And basically, you sort of, you run through the story part and then once you finish the story part of it there is this continuing um you've got all the side quests but you also have this one big task which is to literally catch them all you have to catch one of each pokemon that appears in the game complete your pokedex and once you complete your pokedex as far as i understand you have to fight god um so maybe i'll come back to that at some point i don't know I think because a lot of it after that point becomes just sort of dooting around areas trying to wait for, like, specific things to turn up that are quite elusive, I felt like it stopped being interesting to stream, and then I kind of lost interest doing it off stream as well. Maybe I'll pick that up again. Um, in terms of things that I play on the on the Nintendo Switch regularly, I kind of got really into uh, Mario Kart for a while. Um... And then I started to notice that my Joy-Con drifts every, like, a little bit, but only in Mario Kart for some reason. It only seems to affect Mario Kart, which is really weird and really annoying because poor Waluigi would like to not come in eighth every single time. You know, it just feels, it just feels a little bit sad. Um, and also, so, like, the little, the little, like, noises and dialogue lines that they make when they win or when they don't win after a race. There's one where if Waluigi places in, like, the bottom half of the, um, of the, like, the finishers in the race, he will say sometimes when he does poorly, he'll be like, oh, you know, sort of banging his fist and looking real downtrodden. And sometimes he'll say, everybody cheated. And it's just so sad. <laughs> He's just like, no, this game is rigged. (laughs) And I just, you know, I just love Waluigi so much that it genuinely makes me feel sad to see him being sad. Because he's just, listen, he's just a little guy who wants to play little competitive sports games with his friends. That's the only reason that Waluigi is in this cinematic universe. It's just to have fun. (laughs) I love him so much. He's just a weird, silly little guy. Anyways. um, uh, I'm assuming this is still about Immortals Phoenix Rising. Sen says it's as if the new Zelda had a child with Assassin's Creed Odyssey and it runs in higher FPS as well. Nice. Um, Might also be a thing doing doing me in on the Switch. 
Ah, interesting. No one ever finished a Pokemon game, says Samantha. I'm challenge accepted. Now I have to do it. Oh, no. Uh, I didn't even finish new Pokemon Snap, says Sen. See, okay, this is a funny thing about Pokemon Snap. When I first heard about Pokemon Snap, I was, like, pumped for it. But I was thinking, I didn't realize they meant Snap as in, like, Snap photos, because that's not a piece of terminology I normally use. Um... So I thought that they meant, like, I thought it was Pokemon Snap, as in it was, like, some kind of, like, card game Snap. Which is super basic for a Pokemon release, but also sounds super fun to me. Not not like Pokemon the, like, sophisticated trading card game, which is way too much for my little brain to understand. Uh, I am not a trading card game player. It doesn't understand. It doesn't work for my brain. But Snap? I understand how to play Snap. I wish that it was Pokemon Snap. Because <laughs> that's the level of fun that I enjoy sometimes. Anyways, um, Samantha says, Pokemon, the only game that lets you imprison God in a ball and then use them to win in professional dogfighting rings. <sighs> you know, when you put it that way, I really should go back and finish Pokemon Legends. Um, Pokemon on cards? says Sledge. It would never work. You're right. What was I thinking? That's a stupid idea. That's stupid. That would never work. Um, definitely not something that's ever going to happen. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> um, so I've done another pass of Night Sky. It's still not, it's still not Night Sky enough. I might just, I might just give it another go now. It's, it's, it, do, it does dry down fairly quickly. It's still a little bit damp, but I think we can just, we can just give it another go. Try and get, try and get a little bit more. Now it's getting darker and deeper. This is, this is closer to what I want. We'll keep going. Cause I do want, the, I do want this backdrop to be fairly nice and dark and nighttimey. Even the dark, you know, I, I, in general, I find when I'm doing watercolory stuff, even the, even like the dark stuff, if you were to put it into a computer and eyedropper tool it, it's all fairly soft. Like, is that black? No, it's like a mid gray, but it reads as black in the context of all of the other sort of like soft washes of translucent color. So it's fine. But, um, but even still, that's a little bit too, that's a little bit too mid to be, to read as nighttime. So let's, let's add a, let's add another layer to it. Okay. That's very wet now. So that's going to need to sit, but Ooh, it's doing some interesting granulating stuff with the paper as well, which is going to be really fun. And I love that for us. Um, but let's do, let's do maybe this archway up here. Cause there's, there's one fun thing I want to do with this archway up here. And that's what I want to pop in a little plant pot. Um, Pokemon snap like a cookie. Oh, Pokemon ginger snaps. Hell yeah. Deliciousness. Um, <laughs> Sen says if the God is new, then it came with the ball controller of let's go Eevee slash Pikachu pre-captured. What? That's wild. Um, I do, the one I don't know anything about Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu except for the fact that you get to like there's like an interact mode with with your with your Eevee or your Pikachu where you give them scritches and it's the cutest thing and it's the only reason that I want to that I would want to play that game is just that I get, get I get to give scritches to little Eevee and they're like <laughs> you know like it tickles and it's just like ah. I want to give them scritches and make them feel real happy. You know what I mean? Um, who doesn't love getting scritches? It's great. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to take a sip of my tea, which was graciously made for me by my beautiful moderator slash spouse. <sighs> Tastes like Thai food. Perfect. Anyways, um, God in the Pokemon world is Arceus, but Mew is the equally powerful statistic-wise, if I remember correctly. Ah. Uh, uh, must be nice being strong enough to fight God. Anywho. Um, I got the Eevee slash Pikachu Switch set, says Sen. Oh, cute. Um, I really wanted to get the, like, limited edition Animal Crossing Switch when it came out. But wouldn't you know it, it was impossible to get a hold of. Also, I think it was more expensive, but it was also impossible to get a hold of. I was lucky to get a hold of a regular Switch, because I think we looked for a while, and they kept being sold out everywhere. Um, when I got my switch, uh, but yeah, anyways, <coughs> 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 
Right. Okay. So on this shelf here, I'm going to just put a little... Just a little plant pot. Which is going to be... It's in a bit that's a pain in the backside to water because they're going to have to get on a big step stool in order to do it. But, you know, somebody didn't think that far ahead when they bought it. And it's sort of got little... Little viney bits sort of hanging... Hanging down. With little leaves on them. Because I like these kind of plants and I think that they're cute to, to put on uh, bookshelves. This isn't a specific like type of plant. Except that one that exists in my imagination. Um, but anyways. Um, uh, Sen says, if I would not have had uh, an Ellie switch yet, I would have tried to get the Animal Crossing one. Ooh, yeah, definitely. The Animal Crossing one, it was just so cute. Like, the colors of it were nice. What I will say is I got the limited edition Animal Crossing switch inside the Animal Crossing game. And that's as close as I get. <laughs> That's as close as I get. Oh well. If they if they're still out there, they probably exist on eBay for like exor exorb I can't why can't I say that word exorbitant amounts of money, uh, which I personally do not wish to spend on an additional games console for a games console that I already own and is quite a few years old now. So, um. I don't know. I'll probably, I'll probably at some point get whatever comes after the Switch when the Switch retires and like a new thing comes in. I don't know. What are they going to, what are they going to do after the Nintendo Switch? Is it just going to be the Nintendo Switch 2 and it's kind of similar in principle, but the Joy-Cons don't drift so much and it's, um, and you know, it's more powerful graphics wise. Because I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I guess so. Because, like, that's certainly what they do with other games consoles, is it's just the same games console, but it's, um, but it's more powerful and you can play more sophisticated games on it, uh, generally. Um, but then Nintendo has a track record of doing, like, innovative and weird stuff, you know? Like, they came out with, like, the Wii and suddenly you could do things like shaking your controller at the screen and it makes different things happen. Um, and then the switch, it's like, it's handheld, but you can also sort of dock it so you can do it on the, you can play it on the TV. You know, you can take the controllers apart and play with them in all kinds of different ways. Um, which is very cool and very innovative, but I genuinely, maybe it's just because I don't have the brain for it, but I can't conceive of where they go from here in terms of like a games console that's going to be as well received and good as the switch the switch you no samantha no anything but the switch you oh no <laughs> for those who aren't familiar with the over of nintendo consoles uh the the wii was released and then a few years later they released the wii u and it was uh pretty pretty universally panned as a not as good um console so, uh, there you go. One of the nice things about moving forward in this piece is that these books are bigger than those books. So hopefully, um, I don't, I don't have as many of them to draw, which is kind of nice. I don't know what these, some of these are quite hefty tomes. Maybe there's some historical biographies here. Those tend to be quite meaty hardcovers. Um, I think, I think this back here is like the nature section. Cause this guy's going to be reading a book about like bird watching or something like that, you know, sort of a guide to like local birds sort of thing, which is his bag. There's, oh, there's a skinny, skinny little tome here. And what's, what's, what's all this then? I think the rest of these are going to be, are going to be on their sides probably like so. And then maybe another one next to that, like so. And the rest of it is fairly obscured by the plant, so I think that'll do. Um, ooh, Samantha says Nintendo's next big innovation in the gaming field should be making VR work and affordable. You know, I could I could see that be interesting. 
VR Mario Kart? VR Mar- Okay, VR Mario Kart sounds fun until a blue shell comes at you. And then it is the stuff of nightmares. Suddenly it's a horror game, and I don't know how I feel about that. I really don't. I don't. Oh no! Oh jeez. Anyways. Ah. Samantha says, I don't have five billion to spend on a VR headset for games that are pretty mad. Mm, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, uh, like, my familiarity with VR gaming is probably, like, it's less than, than other types of games, certainly, because I don't have a VR headset. I don't really have an interest in getting a VR headset. And part of the reason that I don't really have an interest in getting a VR headset is, A, like, it's my face is going to get sweaty, and I don't, that doesn't seem comfortable. But apart from, like, one or two notable examples, most of the games that are available for the VR headset are not things that I really want to play anyways. They're, like, horror games that are kind of weird... And I don't want to be even more immersed in horror games because I don't play horror games to begin with because they're spooky scary and oh no. <laughs> oh, Sledge. Yes. Yes, Sledge is right. They've already done VR. Actually, Nintendo's done VR. They made the Virtual Boy. Which was, um, which was a Virtual Boy who could be your friend. Which, when you were a very lonely child, <laughs> the Virtual Boy... Was was a fun was a fun friend. Anyways, Virtual Boy too. Yay. Anyways, and it's just and and the Virtual Boy is just there's one game and the game is Virtual Boy, and it's just it's just interact with with a little guy who will be your friend. Um. Anyways, I got to try that one during an event once, and oh my god, it was just not good. No, it was it wasn't very good. Sledge, no, no, no. No, no, no. No. No, no. Anyways, I mean, I did watch a YouTube video once that was a YouTuber watching. Obviously, we didn't see anything because he didn't want to get, you know, like banned from YouTube. But watching VR adult videos. And it sounds like it was a deeply uncomfortable experience. I don't think he enjoyed it. Um, he seemed very uncomfortable. <laughs> Anyways, um, <coughs> so not like 99% of all of the VR, VR headsets will be used for. I mean, as I say, they already make grown-up videos of people having special times together for VR headsets, and I don't, I don't see the appeal. I, I, that just, oh, that just feels weird and uncomfortable. It's too... No, um, it's not for me. Moving on. Red on black graphics. Def already not a good idea, but also forced you into the weirdest position to play it says then. You know, I'm happy just playing things and looking at them on my computer monitor or looking at them on my Switch monitor. I don't, I don't need to be more immersed in the game than that. I really do not. Like, it's that's fine. Like, I'm good. You know? It's, um... It's, it's, it's fine. I'm good. So if they do come up with a VR console, I'm gonna... I'm gonna hard pass on that because it is not for me. And that's okay. I'm allowed to not like things and makers of things are allowed to make things that I don't like. My god! God, my, I'm sorry, my downstairs neighbors are playing the loudest music known to humankind right now, and I really hope it's not picking up on the mic because it is definitely grinding my gears a little bit. Like, y'all, do you not know that I'm streaming? <laughs> it's fine, but oh. Um, <laughs> I also want it to stop. Okay, I definitely can see it picking up on the mic when I'm not speaking, so oh no, I hope it's not too obtrusive for y'all. At least my tea is delicious. And it's in my Moomin mug. You can't really see that it's the Moomin mug. Well, you can, you can just a little bit. I can't tilt it further than this, though. Otherwise, my tea will spill all over my canvas. And I don't want that, oddly enough. Ah, anyways. Um, Samantha says, that's what they should release next. The Nintendo Isekai just uploads your brain right into the game. No! 
No. No, no. Is this, is this a situation where if you die in the game, you die in real life? Because I already did that when I played the Steel Soul run of Hollow Knight. Or is this more like a Jumanji situation where you you probably don't... I don't know. I don't, do you die in real life if you die in Jumanji? I don't remember. Um, I just remember that my celebrity crush is in the new ones. I just watched a super cut of, of the scenes that they're in, to be perfectly honest with you. Anyways. Um, it's normal, right? Uh, can I leave my brain... Can I leave my brain in the game? Sounds better than going to work, says Sledge. Honestly, um, if I could physically go to Animal Crossing... I'm I'm not sure that I wouldn't. If I could physically go to Animal Crossing and take my partner with me, and my partner would be into that, the temptation is real. Anyways, um, Samantha says, so friends, okay, yeah, question for the chat. If you got isekai into the last game you played, how screwed are you? Um, so the last game I played, I'm pretty sure is Celeste. So I think I would be okay. I would just stay at the base of the mountain and choose not to climb it and just hang out with the weird old lady you meet at the start of the game. Eating ice cream and cackling maniacally. Sounds fun to me. Um, too many bugs slash ranchos and scorpions, says Sledge. Oh my god, that's true. If Okay, if we were to visit Animal Crossing, it would have to be when it's not rancho season, when it's not Scorpio season. Otherwise, I would be scared to go out at night. Though, to be fair, I'm scared to go out at night in England, so it's not that different. <laughs> Anyways. Um, oh, Nick says, Master Sword Art Online. I don't like that anime, but the title worked. Hmm. Um, since as Phoenix Rising could kind of work out if I had the powers, uh, Sledge says, oh, Hitman 3, so I could just stay forever in the Paris Posh house and I'd be fine? Hell yeah. I would like to, if, oh, could we go to the, could we go to the, like, I think it's in Hokkaido, the spa level? Can we just go hang out in the spa in Hitman? That would be cool. Kirby! Hello! Welcome in! Lovely to see you. Kirby says, hey, Sammy managed to make a stream for a change, so here for a lurk. Thank you very much for the lurk, Kirby. I'm afraid we're probably not going to go on too much longer because I have to go cook a vegetable stir-fry, but I do want to finish this bank of bookshelves. So enjoy watching me draw books, I guess. <laughs> it's lovely to see you as always, my friend. Um, oh dear, Sutton says, my printer is printing stuff slightly too small, which for patterns is not good. Uh-oh, do you need to do some fine-tuning on the, the resizing of things then? Um, Attention, Twitch user Sammy Cash. Jam. Shoppers. <laughs> hello, friends. Welcome in, Raiders. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Welcome in, Jam. Thank you so much for the raid. How is everyone doing? Welcome on in. Hello, hello. Oh my goodness, so many beads in chat. So many little, so many rainbows. So many Venuses. Hello, my chat has just disconnected. What's going on? I don't know. Are we still streaming? I hope so. Anyways, hello, friends. How's it going, Jam? Lovely to see you. How was the rest of your stream? How was Crow Sworn? I want to say the name of the game is. How was the rest of Crow Sworn? Maggie, hello, welcome in. Silly little guy, lovely to see you. Silly cat, hello. Tal, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome on in. Thank you, thank you. Lovely to see you as well. I hope y'all are having wonderful Mondays. And Jam, of course, hello. And Roll, hello. And Kirsty and Kiona, hello, friends. How's it going? Wonderful to see you. Happy Mondays. Displaced salad. Welcome on in. How's it going, friend? So, little guy, thank you for the uh, hydrate. I'm going to take a little sip of my tea. Mm. Good. I was fortunate enough to catch a little bit of Jam Jam's raid earlier, uh, playing the demo of the forthcoming, I hope forthcoming so at some point in the near future game, uh, Curseworn, um, which looks very, very, very cool, and doing little sketches of the different, like, elements and characters of the game as well as, as he went on. And that was very, very cool. A, a cool concept for a stream. And also, um, and also looked like a really fun activity just in general, uh, which is a lot of fun, a lot of fun to see. Uh, so I hope you had a good time with that. Um, lots of sketches, lots of typical jam complaining about lack of skill. Oh, geez. Well, hey, it's a new game and it's going to take some getting used to. And I, frankly, I think you were doing amazing. So you should feel very proud. Uh, I definitely know that feel of like, 
This is similar, but not the same as a game that I've played quite a bit of. And so my hands want to do things that I'm not able to do in this game. He only got 100%. Oh my god. Oh my god, also congratulations. Uh, silly little guy says I need to leave, but have fun drawing. Thank you very much. For anyone who's just come in, hello. I should introduce myself. My name is Twitch user Sammy Kelsch. I'm a variety streamer. I stream art streams on Mondays and Thursdays. I tr stream cozy game streams on Fridays and sometimes on Sundays as well. Though not a ton lately because I've been super busy. Um, but uh, today we are sketching... This is good. All of these shelves are eventually going to be full of books, but believe it or not, it takes a really long time to draw all of these teeny tiny books. But this is a bookshop, and these are some little guys in a bookshop. Um, and I've set myself a somewhat monumental task, so it's taking a little while to get did. Uh, so we're sketching in those books, and at the same time, I'm also I'm also painting a thing because I don't know how not to uh, multitask. So this is this is a couple of little guys dancing under some what are going to be very neon lanterns in in the moonlight by the beach. Um, so that's that's the other thing that we're getting up to. We're doing too much today, anyways. Um, uh, when my work is done. It looks, uh, it looks a little bit like, I don't even know what's a representative example of my work. My work is just, well, this, okay, this is something we looked at earlier because this isn't the first time I've drawn bookshelves because I have no chill. Um, here's, here's an earlier iteration of some bookshelves and this took forever as well. I, why am I doing this to myself? Because it's fun. That's why. Anyways, um, Jam says, uh, lurk, I must dash off into lurk. I'm afraid. I hope the bookshop art goes amazingly. Thank you so much, Jam. And thank you again Attention. for the raid. Let's get a Twitch shout out for Sammy Kelsch. Shoppers. And Scrappy. Hello, Scrappy. Welcome on in. I'm just, I'm just about to shout out Jam because, uh, the lovely James B. Barrow has also just raided us. Everyone is here. Lovely to see y'all. Welcome in, Scrappy. And let me get a shout out for you as well. Scrappy, how was your stream? What did you get up to today? It's lovely to see you. And thank you for, thank you for rating and for thinking of rating me that's so nice lovely to see you scrappy i hope you're having a good one and hello to ratza and hello to dave as well welcome in everybody hello hello moths and bees because sammy is delightful oh kirsty no you uh let's see if i can type correctly whilst also speaking at the same time uh, I, I can't i can't anonymous what are you doing oh hell yeah James Barrow just subscribed. Anonymous, thank you for gifting a sub to J- Anonymous! What are you doing? <laughs> oh hell yeah, Scrappy Jane just subscribed. Oh pretzels. Anonymous, thank you for gifting a sub to Scrappy as well. Likewise, if you are not following Jam and if you are not following Scrappy, go do both of those things. Hello Sunshine. The reason it's pushing you as a raider from James's raid. That's- Type in, shout out, and everything. That's I have no idea why. No. Anyways, hello. Anonymous pools, <laughs> Scrappy. Indeed, how were, how was your stream? What did you get up to today? I saw you were doing some coasters. Some, 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 some making of some coasters was that. We made coasters and stuff. That is so stinking cool. Um, we have some Instamograms to look at. That is not mine. Uh, this is a painting I did a little while ago. This is Terry the Forg Mage, and Terry the Forg Mage is, uh, is a fellow who shows up a fair amount on this stream. He's a lovely little guy, and, uh, he's, he's perusing his magic library here and has picked up a couple of interesting tomes to, to study some spells and what have you. I also, here's Jam, who recently raided. And does some beautiful artworks, in turn, including this recent piece for the birthday of Hollow Knight, because Hollow Knight just had a birthday, which is very exciting indeed. Um, if if you've been here at all, you know that I love the game Hollow Knight. I think it's delightful, and um, oh, and I love to, and I, I love rambling about it, and I love artworks of it. And this piece is so evocative and atmospheric, and also so stinking cute because the aesthetic of the game is hecking amazing, and this piece is so nice, and I love it with my whole heart. Anyways, um, but that is, that is the Ort of Jam, and I shall do, let me do, I can do a, a, another shout out. Also, Scrappy, 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 I am, my, my brain is blanking. Is your Instagram the same username as your Twitch? Because I'm very happy to also creep on your Instagram, because you know it, um, it is. Okay, we're gonna go look at Scrappy Jane's Instagram as well. Um, wait, who made this? Who do I follow? I've just done a, sh a shout out. 
Um, this is this is uh, this is Jam Aoife. You should go follow him. He's a very fun and very cool uh, fellow who does like gaming and game dev and a lot of really beautiful artwork as well. Um, and Scrappy, who also just raided and is a lovely human being and an amazing artist and a wonderful maker of games and maker of play player of games and stuff. I cannot speak anymore. I've been streaming for a while and my brain is porridge. Uh, but this is this is the wonderful Scrappy Jane has. Just the okay. First of all, I need to shout out the expression on Luna the Moth here because it is so very relatable to me. That is, that is a mood. I don't know what I don't know how to word that mood, but that is such a mood to me, and I love this. I love this little artwork. Um, I think she's so stinking cute. Um, Scrappy does a lot of Lu Luna the Moth is 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 a friend is a friend of Scrappy. She's so stinking. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this little test card that's so stinking cute. Does that say butts? That says butts. I love it. I love it so much. That is absolutely adorable. Um, the other thing that Scrappy does is dots. And when I say dots, I mean like this is so many dots. It is so detailed and the textures are so cool. And I absolutely love, and this is what it's based on, of course, The Muppet Christmas Carol, but I love Scrappy's work so much. I think it's absolutely delightful. Um, a Scrappy game dev art. I'm sorry, I've literally forgotten how to word. Hopefully it'll let me shout out Scrappy. There's a little cool down between the shout out command, but um, please go give Scrappy a follow if you're not already. And I can type correctly. My brain was like, Scrabby? No, Scrappy. You know what letters are. There we go. Please go give Scrappy a follow if you're not already following Scrappy. Um, and regardless, uh, let's let's continue on with these bookshelves, shall we? Uh, anyways. Uh, damn, the dots are amazing. I need to do more Muppet art. It's so fun. I would love to see more Muppet art from you, Scrappy. I mean, I love everything that I see from you. Um, I love all of your pieces of, like, Luna, the moth, and... Um, all of your like dot work and stuff. I just like the things what you do. <laughs> but Muppets? I love Muppets. <gasps> Scrappy got inspired. Woo! That's exciting. I look forward to seeing the fruits of this inspiration. That's rad as heck. Hell yeah. We love to hear it. This, okay, this shelf is slightly on the piss. And I think that's, um, I think that's probably because there are some quite weighty tomes up here. This shelf is absolutely packed with books, I reckon. There's just so many of them. Um, and we can't see the tops of these books because, uh, because that's where the artwork ends. But maybe there's like, there's like a couple of these that are sort of stacked up on their sides, which is why I've gone sideways, because for some reason that's how I roll. And then maybe some more going this way as well. There we go. This shelf is just, it's jammed with books. <laughs> There's too many books on this shelf. Oh no. Oh no. It's going to buckle under its own weight if we're not careful, but never mind. I do, I do like that. There's just one like house plant in among all of these books. Somehow it's still alive. It thrives off of it thrives off of the inspiration of humans that come to visit the bookshop, I suppose. I notice that the, the little guys are kind of becoming obscured by all of the visual noise because it's still just a pencil sketch, but hopefully they'll be nice and visible when everything's painted in. Um, they're just chilling at the back there. I just like drawing little guys. I don't know why. I used to... I, I tell you what, I kind of did like a conceptual 180 at some point as an artist because for years all I did was just like a character on a blank white background. Occasionally, I would make the background be a color, but I didn't really challenge myself to do backgrounds very often unless I was, like, specifically being paid to do it. And then something flipped in my brain, and I was like, I should do more backgrounds. And I started doing sort of fairly simple, straightforward backgrounds, and they just started getting more detailed and more detailed and more detailed until sort of the people in them started also kind of getting smaller, and now I'm doing a lot of, like, very detailed pieces and landscapes and stuff with just, like, little peoples in them. I don't know. I don't know how or why that happened, but it sure... Oh, boy, it super did. Um, but it's fine. I kind of I really love... 
I kind of really love doing that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's a good, it's a good, um, anywho, uh, I'll keep y'all posted if I can, if, okay, if that Google account that I, that I had, that they, that I'm having some hassles over, like, accessing, um, if that gets, so for anyone who missed it, I created a second, like, Google account because I needed an email address for business inquiries and a second YouTube channel for stuff that doesn't really belong on my mainline channel. I have a YouTube channel, by the way. It's very different to what I do on stream. Um, but it's a fun time, if that's what you're into. Um, there it is, if you want to subscribe. There's not a lot on there, but uh, we're working on getting new videos up a little bit more frequently. Um, but uh, I made a second channel uh, to do to do some other types of things with that um, was literally existent for less than a day and I got a notification that the account had been suspended um, and the reasoning behind it was very, very vague. Very, like, incredibly vague. And so I appealed the decision being like, this, this account just exists for, like, a business inquiries email address. I don't understand. Like, this is... Like, you're allowed to do this. And, you know, I was very polite about it as well. Um, but they said it may take a couple days to get back with, like, a response to an appeal. So I'm not holding my breath that it will come back. But if it comes back, I'll let y'all know. Um, it's not anything super exciting. But um, but that was kind of, that kind of... That kind of ruined my weekend a little bit. Because I put a reasonable amount of, like, time into... Um, getting this stuff set up and then it literally just got like um it literally just got nuked by google for very nebulous reasons which is a little frustrating all of these books you're not going to be able to get to any of these books without a little step ladder even tall people are going to struggle though i reckon that this archway of shelves is such that tall people are going to have to duck so actually maybe you'll be fine uh, <laughs> anyways, this book is a little bit shorter because, you know, just like people, some books are shorter. Um, I'm going to guess that they put books here that are ones that they reckon not a lot of people are going to want. So, so they don't constantly having, be having to like get bookshop staff to like get up on ladders and take them down kind of thing. Cause I'm sure that can be a little bit of a pain in the bottom. But, um, but never mind. Okay, we can't see the tops of these books because we can't see the top of this shelf. I am. Oh boy, I can really hear whatever the neighbors are listening to. It sure is some noise. I really hope it's not picking up too much on the stream, but I have a sinking feeling it probably is quite a bit. So I might actually... Uh, it's getting close to my dinner time anyway, so I might, um, I might want to call it there a little bit. Um, are we happy with, so, because, <laughs> because I decided uncharacteristically that I wanted to multitask this stream, um, I did paint in the night sky over the, there's a little sort of like woods in the background here, and there's some little sort of shrubs hanging out in this little sort of clearing slash kind of beach not audible on stream says that there's so thank you very much for the confirmation that is a relief because it is genuinely very loud where i am but i think my microphone is like reasonably good quality and it's pretty good at filtering out sort of the unwanted gubbins i think i hope um so that's rad <sighs> taking a sip of my tea which is a delicious builder's tea it's taifu and the mug has so you can just about see without me spilling my tea everywhere is the Moomins. And then on the other side of the mug, it's, you can't, okay, you can't see that at all, but there's Moomin Mama and she's uh, just taking a dip in the lake. It was very, very cute. She's left her, she's left her characteristic handbag and apron on the side. <laughs> <coughs> oh, beans, excuse me. Anyways, um... But yeah, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to call it there for today. I don't know. I might do some of the, some of the book drawing off stream if I have time, because otherwise it's going to be a couple weeks before we have this actually painted. Uh, but this was a lot of fun. Um, sorry to, sorry to finish so soon after, after the raids, but thank you again so much to, uh, to the lovely Jam 
and the the equally lovely Scrappy for the lovely raids. You are lovely people. You're all breathtaking. It's been a lot of fun today. Um, also, thank you, Sledge, for discovering that we have stream stickers now. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have three so far. I'm I'm gonna work on figuring out some other. I have an idea for the next stream sticker, but I have to draw it first. And you'll just have to wait and see what that is. But um, regardless, uh, this was fun. These were fun pieces to do. I'm really happy to get to be using this um, this set of very dark, atmospheric sort of Gansai colors again. They're so much fun. I used that a lot when I did the Hollow Knight Art Month last year. Um, Kirby says, thank you for the lovely stream or what I caught of it. Thank you so much for stopping by, Kirby. It was lovely to see you. Um, I'm going to see if there's uh, somebody on online that we can do a little raid on. I'm going to remember to end the stream after I raid this time because there's there's a new there's a new raid uh, configuration um, here and it uh, it it made a little bit of a dog's breakfast of my head last time I streamed <laughs> and I didn't actually uh, end the stream until I'd been <laughs> offline for like 20 minutes or so. <laughs> Which, uh, whoops. So we're going to not do that this time. But I'm going to pop a generic raid message in the chat. If you want to grab that as we head out to raid someone. Uh, that would be rad. So yeah, I was streaming to literally no one. I was streaming the audio of the stream that we raided into to literally no one for like 15, 20 minutes or something like on Friday. And I was so embarrassed when I found out. I felt so silly. But as I say, um, they, they made a change to the way that the raids work. And that really messes with the way that my brain is funded. So I was like, ah, oh, geez, I better get out of here. Anyways, um, let's see who is around. We can do a little raid on who's someone that we maybe haven't raided in a little while. Let me have a little check. Take a little looky-loo and see what folks are up to. Okay. I think I, think I know who we're going to raid. So let me get the little raid you do up. Right, and what are you up to right now? Also, don't, uh, okay, f okay, fine, just do the, okay, okay, we're gonna go raid, we're gonna go raid Sad Little Acorn, I'm gonna, st I'm gonna start the raid, we're gonna go raid Sad Little Acorn, uh, who's doing some very cute art right now, very sweet, um, and uh, I will be back on Thursday continuing this piece. I may have filled in some of the books in the meantime just so we can actually put color on it, which is always the most fun part. Um, and maybe not take like an entire month to paint it. That would be nice. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank y'all for hanging out today. Thanks again to Scrappy and to Jam for the raids. And thanks for everyone who, uh, who was here uh, for, for lurking or chatting or all of the fun stuff. You're all breathtaking. And I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful magnificent cozy good week i wish you all kinds of good stuff and gentle times and nice rest and good things and uh yeah hope to see you again soon you're all breathtaking take care everyone uh, and hope to see you again soon goodbye everyone goodbye and thank you for watching <laughs>